in a world crying out for a top 10 show. John Roca and Matt Nost are here to bring you the top 10. Brought to you by the Schmoes No. Take it away, boys. Welcome, everybody, to this week's edition of the Top 10 Show. Uh, I am John Roca. I am Matt Nost. And uh, we're coming to you live from the Collider offices. We're in the conference room again, so sorry if there's a bit of an echo. But unfortunately, we are at the mercy of whatever's going on yeah. here at Collider. And they're always doing stuff here. So even uh, after the well, official no one, end of day, 6 No one ever said anything. I just listened to one of them that we've done in here. And I was like, it's kind of echoic. You don't like echoic? Oh, is that a word? Uh, yeah. It means Ooh. echoey. <laughs> It's the same thing. You're just adding the, the right uh, suffix. I don't believe you. Echo- Look it up. Echoic does not sound echoic. like a word. It's an echoic environment. I think there's an error. It is. Well, we're Dinosaurs. surrounded by concrete and hard surfaces every which way you can see, <laughs> and it bounces all the sound back in. Hence, echoic. Hence, echoic. Yes. So fair. So I don't, it's I, a fucking real world. I still don't believe you, man. Go ahead. Look, it's, you have a computer and a phone right in front of you. You can look that up at any point. I can sit here. We can make our guests wait. To me, it sounds as like we an do era, this bullshit. A dinosaur era. The yeah, I was wondering era. when I can talk. I mean, I'm just enjoying that <laughs> part of this. Chime in whatever you want. Yeah. To. Well, here I mean, we go. Mark, I decided right. to do it. Whether or not we say your name for another five minutes, I have That's no fine. idea. They can maybe get it from the voice or my uh, my echoic well, nature. It'll probably be in the your title. name's in the title. Yeah. So they already told you. They knew. Oh well. Just technically, we haven't introduced you. It's not like we spring it on like a magic trick at the last second. I know. Point. Well, Thanks. we should introduce him. Um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome uh, to the show. Uh, a guy I've gotten to know really well over the last uh, couple of years in this business and one of the best dudes I've met in this business and uh, oh, wow. very smart guy, intelligent guy, deals with a lot of bullshit and always comes out the other side squeaky clean, smelling good. Um, you have seen him in the Schmodown. He is a two-time champion, singles champion in the Schmodown. Oh, My greatest rival at the beginning of the Schmodown, a guy I wanted to take the belt off of and eventually did. We've had our battles. Uh, we've had our battles uh, through, through the time. But uh, more than anything else, uh, he's one of the good guys in this business, and he does great work here at Collider and has done great work on Schmo's No. Uh, and uh, I'm very glad we finally got him on to talk here on the Top Ten Show. Ladies and gentlemen, Yodi Mark Riley. <laughs> Well, thank you, Mr. Rook. That You're was welcome. a nice introduction. Well, I appreciate it. I'm very happy to be here uh, and with you, Mr. Nost, of course. <laughs> no, no, no. I like I've... John's thespian monologue. Yeah, I know. It was I beautiful. Was like, this it was is... moving. This was reminding me of my days back at USC Theater. Oh, like, uh, yeah. my name is John Roca, and I will be talking about Mark Riley. <laughs> <laughs> this is my this is my uh, theater night was, before audition. <laughs> which which one is it that Roxanne is based on? Where Steve Martin is the feeding Bergerac. the lines. Yeah. Yeah. Bergerac, yeah. Bergerac, yeah. yeah Good my film. my Shakespearean knowledge only goes so deep, guys. Only goes <laughs> well, so deep. I, I thought it was interesting. You asked me for the top ten Shakespeare movies here on this. Oh episode. yeah, that's is, right. Isn't that what we're doing? <laughs> it totally. Right. Like, never mind. I got uh, my dates wrong. Okay. No 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 no. Today today is the top ten superhero movies. Uh, oh, no, no, it's not movies. No, no, top movies. 10 superhero characters. And yes. so the way we did it's because of Deadpool 2 coming out, right? Is yeah, that- and there's, uh, I think, roughly 17,000 more comic book movies before the, yes. the summer ends. Yes. Oh, yeah. So For we sure. got to do all kinds of different you know, shows. Yeah. yeah. So here's a, we're still going to stick with superheroes, but we're going to try and do something a little bit different, <laughs> I guess. I like I, this angle. I think yeah. it's great. I think it's perfect for Deadpool, yeah. who's now... A part of this whole thing, yeah. I guess, you know, with he's a popular superhero with the sequel yeah. coming out, and it looks like he's you know he's back to his ways. And uh, Ryan Reynolds doing a great job bringing that character to life, and that whole history of that 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 even happening is amazing. That they leaked that ten minute video, and everyone went crazy yeah, for true. it, and then they turned that film around in a year is pretty amazing. It is, yeah. Are they just? I already, I already think it's going to be good because the peripheral stuff yeah. is all on point. 
They understand yeah. the character as they're selling them doing these different marketing campaigns, like the Celine Dion video. was yes. hysterical. It's, it's great. Oh, my God. And to have Celine, it's a good song. Yep. I could totally see this in a movie. It reminds me of, like, 90s when this would happen. You have these crossover and, like, this yep. band yeah. with this movie on the summer. <laughs> all that bullshit, which you don't see anymore. And it's pitch perfect. Yeah. yeah. So totally I, I have high hopes for this. Yeah, it does look good. Um, so, we, so the way we're counting this down is... Um, we're talking about top ten superheroes in movies. So we're not using the comic books. Uh, the same superhero could be on our list with two different actors portraying it. It depends. So we're, we're that's the thing. We're picking out the superhero performance that we most enjoy. Uh, that is not what we agreed to. Well, what did we agree to? That is not. I told you that is not how I did my list. Oh. It was like, oh, okay, that's that's good to know. What did we agree to? Well, mine is a more fluid definition. I'd said superhero movie, so it's it's. Not Movie just the individual. Oh, pardon me, superheroes. It's not just the individual. Right. Sometimes it's all of their portrayals because of the possibilities. Oh, now sure. Of course, of course, of course. That's well, you what just I'm said getting, it's yes. individual performances. Well, like, some people want to split it up. Like, I, I didn't split it up, but I was saying maybe somebody split it up. I was saying as an option. See, I was you hoping this would it. already happen, like the, well, the back and forth. He specifically guys, asked me if that was going to be... Five minutes in, this I, is already like and I said, beyond my wildest dreams. I said, <laughs> this, uh, that's not how I looked at it. If you want to do that, go right ahead. Yeah. However you arrive at your list, you know, it's not my fucking choice, but well, this is how I did mine. Well, this is what I was uh, asking about because this is what I was getting into a discussion with my friends about. They were like, well, what do you mean? Do you mean Batman? Do you mean Christian Bale's Batman? Or do you mean Michael Keaton's Batman? I said, right. well, no, in my opinion, you take in the Batman, the entirety of the performances. Yes. Is, and you factor them in, and then you take. And where does it land? Yeah, in the where ranking? does it land yeah. on the on the list? Because you kind of have to take stuff away because Clooney's performance wasn't so great, but maybe you like Christian Bale, so it brought it back up, or right. Val Kilmer's, or whatever. So yeah, that's what I was thinking too, like that kind of like uh, congruent thing. So I must have misunderstood how you responded. Bat- Batman, yeah, but either is, way, is almost on grounds of, of being suspended because of Batman and Robin. Yeah, I mean that's how bad that. Let's movie not is. talk heresy here. and for and forever <laughs> yeah, as well. What are you talking about? Because yeah, I know kidding. both of you assholes are going to have one that I do not have. Right. It's never going to make my list in a million years. Yeah, listen. I can't wait. It was our guesses. We already guessed one of yours. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure you can guess yes. one of mine. And I, we guessed the placement. <laughs> I mean, I have a rep to uphold here. Oh, so. oh to uphold. Yes. So, but, yes. Uh, you, yeah. well, you know, we'll see. We'll yeah. see. This is, this is, this is good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what did you, like, do you remember your first uh, experience with superhero films, Riley? It was. It was Superman 1978. Okay. Yeah. That was that your was, first? That was my first. Yeah. That okay. was, I mean, I saw it in theaters um, and that was it. And then yeah. once I got on VHS, I was just watching that thing over. That was my daily, not daily, but like right. I think I had a weekly movie uh, list that I would watch. Empire Strikes Back was in there. Superman was in there. Footloose. Right. Was in there. Oh my god! Yeah. I mean, I was very eclectic gl- growing up. Yeah, so. right. That's Jaws just... was in there. Sure. Um, sure. You know, uh, then later on in life, uh, you know, ET, Indiana Jones. All ET is not things. a superhero, though. Uh, thank you. I well, he's just saying this. movies. <laughs> movies that I've in watched. his wheelhouse. In my wheelhouse, Superman. Neither is Footloose or Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> well, uh, I would I would argue that uh, yeah. Ren, uh, Ren Kevin is Bacon kind of is a superhero. A superhero. That's right. Ren is a superhero. Uh, who I mean, you've seen the barn dance, right? I, I mean, mean, come on, come on, people break that man dancing. defies gravity. <laughs> By the way, can we talk about that for a second? That barn dance always bothered me. Because you're like, wait, (laughs) you're not allowed to dance. Or is it the train yard or whatever it is, not barn? It doesn't matter. Yeah, something like that. It's something like that. Yeah. Or a fact. It's like a feed factory. factory. Yeah, yeah, the basement of a feed factory. If you're not allowed to dance and you've lived in that town all that time, how the fuck can you professionally break dance at the end of the movie? That's a bunch of bullshit. Well, no, that's Kevin Bacon. He's from Chicago. No, no, but something. Bacon isn't even break dancing. I'm talking about the guys that are doing like the the worm oh, and yeah, shit. Like, yeah. I'm like, where where do you are the Russian dancing that they're doing? Where did you learn to do this? They would drive basements? across the In borders, there? and and uh, that's why they the, you Is know they were driving across. One kid had dancing. MTV, and these were like the five that hung out his house in the basement and like kind of moved along with it. Yeah. Who knows what the answer is? <laughs> the 80s were a weird time, man. There's a lot of coke in the 80s, man. There's a lot of there, coke there was. in the 80s. I don't think they expected people to really dissect the movie this much. Oh, well, you're probably <laughs> Just right. Just enjoy it for what it is. Yeah. And the fact that it was a hit, they're happy. Which yeah. I do, which I do. And that sequel was a bunch of bullshit. I love uh, yeah. that movie. The though. first one, I just like one of those never spoke to me. I was too yeah. young to see it when it came out. And then by the time I went back for it, I was like, I, you need to see this at a time. <laughs> and it has no yeah. measure of charm for me. It's just like, okay. Great, great. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. Like if I was... T- 10, 12, 14, something sure. like that. It might, might speak to me a lot more. Sure. Yeah. 
Well, did you? Did, what about comics? Did you grow up? Did you collect Com- comics? Yeah, comics. I was a Batman, a Superman, okay. a Spider Man. As a kid, or okay. did you get into it later in life? As as a kid, and then I stopped for a while, right. and it was like mostly like Star Wars nerddom, right. that kind of stuff, video games. I started collecting comics again when I was in college. I just got into it because I loved the stories, and I got I got really into. Uh, Brian Michael Bendis' run on Ultimate Spider-Man. Oh, yeah. Which was one of my favorite. Uh, he just killed it. Yeah. And so I loved that. And then I started to get into more of like Avengers and mm-hmm. New Avengers and just kind of following all the like Superman, Batman, you know. Yeah. Uh, the, the Dark Knight Returns was one that right. I read cover to cover. And I, I still have the copy and the, the cover's gone. Sure. Because <laughs> I was reading it so much. And that was more of my, even as a kid, I was yeah. reading that. So Yeah. I was all over the place with my comics. I love Bendis' run on Daredevil. That oh, was yeah. A, Daredevil was, was great. A great run with Daredevil. Um, yeah. Da- yeah. Daredevil was great. Uh, I did the Frank Miller Dare- yes. Daredevil run yeah. as well. Good stuff um, there. What else? I, I got into the Dark Horse Star Wars comics. Oh, nice. And then the nerd in me also, I loved it when Dark Horse would cross over with DC and like Superman versus Aliens, oh, Batman yeah. versus Predator. That okay. stuff was just ridiculous. Yeah, Batman vs. Predator was good. That, that was, was a good one. Who good. does yeah. uh, Star Wars now? I'm assuming it's just some Disney label. No, I mean, now? Yeah. The canon is Star I mean, I dropped off, yeah. to be honest with you. Okay. I, I can't. Keep it's all under the Disney. It's all under the. Of it's course. Disney, but Marvel, are they on Dark, it's, Dark Horse? No, or? it's Marvel. No, Disney Dark Horse stuff, got yeah. rid of them. Yeah. yeah, Dark Horse. They bought them out because there's all the stuff that's out now is canon. So they yeah. control it all. Yeah, I like 100%. It. Yeah. I just saw, I took my, when Gabe was in town, my nephew yeah. did the show. Uh, I took him to like 10 different comic shops around. Yeah. So I ended up like kind of rifling through and reading and you're in it so much. You're like, God, I'd like to see this storyline after yeah. a while. And like, I'd like to see that, but I never got hooked <laughs> back in. Well, they're yeah. so expensive now because the, the three seventy five, five five no bucks for all is an no, no, issue. No. Today I bought, uh, we oh, had this, to do that shoot yeah. at, at the comic book shop, shop and I got the last Jedi number one. Yeah. Just as a, like, I'm like, I'm here. I'm going to buy it. It's collector's baby. Yeah. I'm just going to have it. And it was like four fifty. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> What happened to my comics? That's a Taco so, Bell lunch. Yeah, yeah four fifty. Jesus. No Sadly, I don't even know what's going to be collectible for that. Like that oh. type of stuff. I don't. Th- yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. I There's don't know. so much of the mass produced. Maybe yeah. it's like uh, like the bigger thing nobody could get. I yeah. don't even fucking know. I, yeah. I blew it. I should have done what my high school friend did. He his parent well his parents did this. Bought two of every st- original Kenner Star Wars action oh, figure. Oh yeah! And every once in a while, I tell him, "Please send me that picture." Right. And he has a whole table of all the old Kenner figures from wow. Star Wars, Empire, and Return of the Jedi. Mint, mint. And hasn't edition. sold them because I would imagine hasn't sold them. Wow. wow. At what point is that bubble going to burst? Because I don't know. Yeah. I think it's as our generation starts to age out of it. You got to get rid yeah. of those yeah. next ten years. I don't think he'll ever get rid of them. I think he just really? likes having them. Okay. You know, he's a big Star uh, Wars fan. Because the, com- yeah. the comic book bubble burst. I remember when I was yeah. collecting back in the 80s and early 90s, man, I had everything in like the, the panel board in the back and the, the plastic bag, and you had to change it over three months, every three months, so it wouldn't get old or wouldn't get yellow. Yeah. Was, like you were constantly doing that. And then I had Death in the Family, the Batman Death in the Family, all the originals, and oh, I remember good. it was like 200 something dollars, and I traded it in, and I got my, the money. And then, like within the three or four months after that, it dropped to like twenty bucks or thirty bucks because yeah. the, the the bubble just popped. Which is yeah. yeah. putting out too much product. Exactly, and people were collecting it. Were, were there were there was so much of it exactly that it, it, it inundated the connections. Yeah, I think, yeah. yeah. If you if you have Spider Man number whatever, yeah, or right. one or right. Action Comics, Action one, Comics, yeah, that's where it. Yeah, you know, but like I have Year One, yeah, all the first well, run, the Batman run, yeah. Year One, yeah. and. Those are I have them in mint condition. Yep. I remember checking one. It's nothing. It's yeah, like, I know. It's yeah. fine. It's like yeah, yeah. I'll give you ten bucks. Yeah, great. Thanks. <laughs> well, because yeah. now you can just buy a bound book of it. Exactly. It's the yeah. entire thing. It's like, exactly. well, what's the point other than you want the tangible one? Right. Somebody made on the line, yeah. but you'd have to hold on and keep putting it online, and eventually, it's, yeah. it's yeah. just is it worth it? What about you? Did you get into comics? Like, was that your thing? Did you? Collect me. Do you think you'll be able to seamlessly edit that? Because that was <laughs> I like that you jumped back in. I was wondering how we were gonna try and we had a slight <laughs> hiccup in the show. <laughs> Why are you giving away the secrets? It doesn't matter. It, it happens matters to me. It's life. It's life. I Listen. Guess. All right. What about the time? So you don't know this. When you guys uh, were at the old studio one time, yeah. Adam set it up so all I had to do was hit a button and we oh, could God. record. Yeah, I remember that. And I jumped up like I always check while recording, see if yeah. we're still going. And I jumped up at like the fifty minute mark and went and ran it. It, it stopped after nineteen seconds or something. Oh, right. Geez. And we have done 
we were at our, each other's like fives or fours. Yeah, and that you're was like, pretty oh, intense. fuck, Damn. man. Yeah, that sucks. Now we got to go have the same conversation about those movies, and that's yeah. a lot of them. And yeah, then, that's, uh, yeah. that would be my biggest nightmare. So this hiccup yeah. is nothing. We okay. picked back up. Did I collect comic books? Anyway, the dude across the street <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> sold subscriptions, and we had Star Wars, G.I. Joe. Uh, oh, G.I. Joe. I forgot about G.I. Yeah, Joe. Joe. I had G.I. Joe. Some Spider Man, X Men. Uh, my brother was more into Spider Man, and then okay. Batman. And those were our subscriptions, and then we pick up others. But I stopped right. at a certain point. Now I just go back when someone goes, "Hey, you need to read Dark Knight. You need to read Killing Joke." Or uh, what is it? Long October? What is that October? Oh, the Long, long Halloween. Halloween. Long Halloween. That's a, yeah. great That's a good one. one. Yeah. Like, yeah. hey, Hush. this is good. If you've ever heard, read Hush. Hush is great. I think, I think I've read Fantastic. all the ones that you're supposed to. Well, not yeah. all the ones. That's impossible. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Like the top I get what you fifteen mean. of them, or top whatever. Yeah, yeah. There, there's certain ones where you're like, oh, I got to check this out, and yeah. I got to check it. You know, and you jump into it, and you're, you have a good time. Yeah, I get sucked right in. I read Red yep. uh, Red Sun for that. Oh, oh yeah, nice. Red Sun's great. It's great. Yeah. Um, what, what about superhero movie? What's the first superhero movie you remember seeing in the theater? No idea. Really? Maybe Batman. Or, the eighty nine. I, think I probably saw the. No, I saw Superman three. Is that the one with Prior? Yeah, yeah. I saw that in the theater. Oh, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> trust me. I, I've never liked Superman to this day because of later. <laughs> oh, ones. see, man. I know. A few years back, man. You, Maybe it might be but different. No, <laughs> I, I don't care for any of it. Yeah, oh, you man. don't. I know he doesn't. No. This is going to be that, that's the that's going to be on your <laughs> list, obviously, and his, and it's going to make the list. Mm-hmm. The list you made the list. All right, so um, yeah, go ahead. So uh, so that's it. Yeah, that's it. You want to okay. start the show? Yeah, let's start the show. Do you want to tell them how it works? Once we set a topic, we all go our individual ways. The way it works on a three man is I do my bottom five. Okay. He does his bottom five. Yes. You do your bottom five. Okay. Then I do my next three. He does his next three. You do your next three. Then we trade one apiece. And then once we've revealed our personal top ten list, we create the shows between the two of us. Perfect. Three of us. Um, so if, if I bring up something, it's in your bottom five, and he either doesn't have it or it's not higher, then we'll talk about it. Otherwise, if it's five through one, yeah. and just tell us to punt. Yeah. Okay. Whoever brings it up first. Uh, Got it? I'll figure it out. I'll okay. ask questions yeah. if I don't. That's yeah. smart. Yeah, I can play along. Yeah. Uh, so 10, <laughs> what John, you, what you were saying before is 10 is kind of the hardest spot. Yeah, it is, man. Where there's a lot of deserving candidates. There is. I, I found the same problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you're just like, okay, uh, uh, this, where, where am I going to cheat at with this? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm full on cheating on number 10. I can substitute if need be, but I took uh, Guardians of the Galaxy technically. You took the whole team? Yes. You can't take the whole team. You got to take one person. <laughs> They are a collective mm, hero. No, it that's is a cheating. That's, that's a cheat. Because they are, well, then you, you take one away, they couldn't do anything, and I don't know if you what? qualify them as a hero technically, but they're, by their combined powers, they're as good as Thor. They're as good as Iron Man. Do you have they're X-Men as, on your list too? No. Okay. This is my no cheat. Teams. That's why it's even at number 10. It's just like it's a collective. How about I'll allow it if you choose one out of the – that's your favorite? Well, I don't need you to allow it. That's oh, the beauty yes, of I it. Can. Yes, I can. That's the beauty of it. <laughs> Do like, I allow it? Is yeah. that how it works? Well, I've already <laughs> piqued your interest, so yes. I think I've got the allowance. I, I, it's interesting. We'll get there. Uh, I like well, this. That's also why I put it at it's, 10. Okay. It's going to get knocked off. Yeah, it is. So right. if I'm going to cheat, I'm not going to cheat. Way These principles of yours. I love how this works. Hey, Look, I, a... ch- I stole a candy bar. I didn't steal a lot of money. That is not the same thing at all. That is not the same thing. Coming from the guy that we're doing a, uh, a singular show, he does trio of Luke, Han, and fucking Leia. Well, like, they're equal. Yeah, they're so not. they tied. They're not. <laughs> they, they, I'm with no stone. But yeah, they are they're not, not equal. <laughs> and he was like, what? what so I get to do what I want. And what? you're like, not when we're talking about in singular individuals. What, was, was, the, the, what was the... I don't remember. I remember we were what the specifically, list was. It was supposed to be individual people. It was a lot of controversy. It was a lot of controversy. Yeah. So yeah. It's fucking... With it's hours, I have no idea what's happening. <laughs> yeah, right. I do the honorable thing, and I put it at 10. Oh, honorable. There it is. That way, there's no real discussion. It gets knocked off, and it should still, I think, make a list in my opinion on some level okay that's all i'm saying look out of nowhere when they announced they're going to do a movie with this cast of characters i was like look marvel is high and playing with you know house money <laughs> yeah, yeah basically it's three in the morning four thought. in the morning yeah they've done a bunch of rowdy powder in the bathroom and they're drank way too much <laughs> in vegas and they're just like i'm fucking you know i'm shitting gold bricks over here let's just do this I got two words it. for you man talking raccoon yes <laughs> and a tree, a tree. I that's Wait, what i heard that. Tree? Like, what the fuck to go fuck yourselves yeah and i saw the trailer and i was like they're kind of pulling this off and you see the movie yeah yep i know john and i we both i enjoyed the living shit out of the second yep. one yep me too uh and i think that franchise could stand alone and run five five more like five, five, five total i think it can too yeah yeah so that's why it makes it a 10 
Okay. Depending on how they resolve what happened at the end of Infinity War, yeah, I think it could they will. run. Okay. No, no spoilers. There's a no lot spoilers. of spoilers. We'll by see. the way, we, oh, I am going to bring up points of Infinity War. I won't be... Okay. I, I'm going to do spoil heavy too much. spoilers. Yeah, let's be yeah. vague. I'm going to be vague, but it's like character stuff that happens in that movie yeah. really swayed me for, for this list. But also, I this, this not, su- not swayed me, but right. there, there are points that I'm going to make. So yeah. I won't spoil it, okay. just in case, okay. you know... The, the two of you out there listening to this haven't seen it. Who haven't seen I it. I care about yeah. you two people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's I mean, worthy of being seen. It's made yes. over a oh, yeah. billion dollars. It's, it's really good. It's, yeah. It's really, if you're a fan of superhero films, it, and more than likely you are, that's, yeah. it's, it's really good. It's, yeah. the, it's the Super Bowl, and it's, it's one of those Super Bowl games that goes down to the wire. It was that good. Wow. Yeah. Strong statement. I like it. And for our international fans, that is World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like a shootout, and it's been 1-1 totally. one, one or 0-0. Totally. Nil, nil. It's just That's been right. deadlocked the whole game. And then the goal was scored, and they took off the shirt, and they slid on their knees, right? Yep. Is that how it that's happens? That's how it Roca? works. Okay. Yeah, that's how it works. They right just on. yell it in Spanish. All right, what's your number nine? Uh, my number nine is uh, get ready to say the words punt. Okay. Black Panther. Not on my list. Not on your list? No. Not on the top five? Or uh, the bottom five, I should say? Yeah. Uh, yeah, punt. 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 Okay. Okay. Right, it's on. So it's, it's on. five through one. Tell me to punt. All right. Okay. So it's wait. So five. Okay. So five through one. Yes. So if, now if can I reveal where five. Black Panther is on my list? No, no, no. no. If it's six through ten, we'll talk about it now. Right. It, it is, is six. It's six through ten. Black so, Panther. Is okay. On. Okay. So what, what number, number is it? Uh, eight. Okay. Okay. Number yeah, eight. That's fine. Yeah. That's Nine. perfect. John doesn't have it, so we get to rightly judge him. Go right? ahead. That's the beauty of the three I have another weave. black superhero, so y'all can kiss my fucking ass. Oh shit! I didn't know Shaft counted. Otherwise, I would have put him on my list. He could have rated pretty high. It's Electro. It's Jamie Foxx. No, go ahead. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he's a good guy? Hero? I thought he was. Okay. Fuck that Spider-Man. That's a, it's an interesting worldview. <laughs> I'd like to get inside your mind. I did not like that Spider-Man. Uh, anyway, yeah. All right. So, yeah. Uh, Black Panther. Black Panther. Um, it's hard to introduce character when they did, and he actually commands your attention and respect pretty much immediately. Yeah. Mm. Like, he really stands up and holds his own. He doesn't overpower them, and they don't overpower him. Yeah. And that's his introduction, and you're like, wow, who is this? And then the backstory really ties in. Like, it, it, the, the, the idea that they sold you initially, they really fulfilled once they filled in who this character was. Yeah. So they, I think it just shows a lot of promise going forward. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I like the first film. I I like n- other other new films. Uh, I'll get into that later. Origin films, you mean? Not origin films. Newer st- uh, superhero films. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, that one to me was another origin story. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm kind of origin storied out. It was really good, but it just I can't wait to see you actually do something with this character. I hate to break it to you. Get ready for the next ten years. It's gonna be a lot of origin I know. stories. It's gonna be a lot years. of rehashes. I'm sure. Oh yeah. It's yeah. gonna suck. Yeah. yeah. It's gonna suck bad. <laughs> Uh, so that other than that, like I can't wait for the next one. Yeah, because I, right. I think the potential there is through the roof. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So what, what? So now I yeah, just talk about what you, you about your number. I talk about yeah. 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 Uh, much of the reason you did, I thought what the introduction of Black Panther in Civil War was one of the best, mm-hmm. and then to like. You kind of mentioned it, Matt. It was like he just commanded the screen for mm-hmm. me. Chadwick Boseman mm-hmm. is incredible. And every time he was on and every time he talked, I was like, in. I was like, my God, I'm hanging on every word this he guy says. He seems regal. He yeah. seems absolutely the king. Yeah. And at that moment, the prince. And I was like, wow, this is. And then when he suits up yeah. in Civil War yeah. and you see what he can do, you're like, this is one of the greatest superheroes I've ever seen. And then the yeah. movie proved it for me i i didn't find it much of an origin story as much as it was a continuation of a small origin take in civil war right okay. so that we we then learn what the 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 changing of the guard so to speak is yeah in black panther where he the rite of passage to become the king and then the yeah. sacrifice he has to make or or the what, what he's going to be challenged with yeah. and i thought they did it so well in yeah. that movie so so well in that movie that i cannot wait for part two yeah. and part three, yeah. and I hope part four. I mean, I think it's one of those storylines that are, uh, or characters that can exist for a very long time as long as it's – and I, Kugler just uh, – I mean, yeah, unbelievable. Kugler. The guy as a director is three for three on that one. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, thing from, the reason it's not on my list is because – I mean, the not Civil War, at all? Not at all. The Civil War – That's incredible. – is a great introduction of Black Panther. Yeah. And I immediately was hooked into that Black Panther – what happens in the movie is that, and this is why my list, he's not on my list, is because he's not even the star of his own movie. Killmonger is. 
I think of Mbaku, Killmonger, Shuri, Okoye. Mbaku? Mbaku. I think of all those characters before I think of Chadwick Boseman. Really? It's, not, it's not because Boseman isn't a good actor. He's a fantastic actor. I think the way they wrote that part, it's he had to suffer so the film could work. And by mm. that, I mean he has to be the foundation and the ground so that everyone else can bounce off of him because he has to be the solid dude through the whole film. Okay. And I get that. He does have a journey as an art because he had to realize the stuff that his father pulled, yeah. all that kind of jazz. And you have those moments but for me what sticks with me is Killmonger what sticks with me is Shuri or Okoye um, or or, or, uh, M'Baku even more so than Black Panther Bozeman does a great but there was something more interesting about him in Civil War that they didn't fully 100% transfer over into Black Panther the overall film is incredible and it's one of the top five MCU films ever made but for me, I think I what he far. does in Black Panther, you wouldn't. Okay. Hey, it's another origin. If this came yeah, out yeah. eight years ago, sure. Okay. It'd be like, this is an amazing origin story. But now yeah. I've seen eight origin stories. Just like, I get it. And you got to have some of these same tropes right. and, and blah, 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 blah. Right. Hell, wow. even Ulysses Claw is more memorable, so to speak, from his time in the movie God, than for I Bozeman mean, for me. Just, just that relationship with, with Black Panther and his dad, yeah. just those moments with him. I'm watching everything land. That's Chadwick yeah. Boseman, but that's the character too. Your, right. your hero is only good as your villain, and vice versa. And I think yeah. that mm. the, that Killmonger, yes, he's incredible. Yeah. But to, to to have that quiet intensity as the hero, and then to have to like, you know, do so much to get back up that mountain and take right. that throne back is a, is a great story yeah. that I didn't expect. So I, I still don't consider it necessarily an origin story, uh, as much mm. as it's, this is a story that like he is not. He he was thrown out off the throne right. by Killmonger, right? And then he's you know he's got to battle his way back, and yeah. I just found it fantastic. Okay, that's fair. Like yeah. these are, these are my reasons why I don't. Yeah. yeah. All right. No, so what's your number eight? Uh, my number eight is Doctor Strange. Ooh, great mm. choice. Neither. Damn it! I really wanted to put it uh, on. Dude, I, I thought I about really it. I really wanted to put it on. In movies, I, I I can't do it just yet. Yeah. Okay. Well, I can't do it just yeah. yet. You're yeah, both yeah. wrong. <laughs> even though <laughs> you're both wrong. Even though I liked Doctor Strange yeah. more in Infinity War than his own movie. Oh wow! Oh, than his own Doctor Strange. Movie. I love both. Yeah, me yeah. too. This I is too. I mean, we're splitting hairs here. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like this because this is it, yes, it's an origin story, and I just said I'm sick of origin stories. <laughs> yeah. But this one is different because it's it very unusual. It, to, it takes it to yeah a philosophical yes. realm. The fact that there's an infinite universe it asks something different of you as opposed to another one on Earth where. The hero's got to fall and he's got to get back up. I buy and, that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So this one was to me is like it's a different headspace and it's it's yes you have to prove yourself physically but also mentally and you have to wrap your mind around abstract ideas. Yeah. And the closing hook is not him being a superhero. It's using his mind to manipulate something he's learned to do through innate ability and whatever mm-hmm. else and practice yeah. and all that shit. Yeah. But the fact that it's just like no, listen, I can take a lick and keep on taking forever. Right. And that's that's my hook. Yeah. I will okay. drive you mad. I, I would do this and we will live this moment. And yeah. you're like that is. That's fantastic. It, that yeah. So the idea yeah. of like it's a superhero through wit and mm-hmm. and ability, but yeah. also you know intelligence. And for me, that I gravitate towards that because like wow, maybe even as a thirty nine year old man, I could do that. You know, I could learn. <laughs> I could learn how to use that specific Infinity Stone. What is that? The Time Stone? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it just as an introduction, and it was a character that I thought was okay in comics because I was young. Yeah. So the idea of different dimensions and all that shit didn't mm-hmm. really appeal to me as much. Whereas now as an adult, they're like, wow, this is technically possible, I guess, on some level. This yeah. is ridiculous. Right. You can make up anything you want to. There's infinite worlds. Maybe that's true. <laughs> you're like, He's holy the- shit. Uh, this, this character has endless options yeah. as an adult. I think it's fantastic. So, and Cumberbatch was awesome in the film. I, I enjoy the only thing that draws that my drawback with coming back is that accent. That American accent sometimes can get on I mean, just the way he's pronouncing Don't certain care. words. For me, it bothers me. It's right? not as bad so, as Ray Fiennes, so it's fine. Oh, <laughs> whoa! No, Ray Fiennes whoa. comes down sometimes with a very specific, and you're like, I don't know what region of the country that is specifically. I've lived every, well, which, everywhere. Which at this Ray point. Fiennes? Are we talking about like made in Manhattan Ray Fiennes oh, or Lord. like uh, eh? like Voldemort? Ray Dealer's Fiennes. choice. <laughs> British Dealer's Voldemort. choice. Whatever you want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but no, it's a good. It's, uh, I love the Doctor Strange movie. I defend it all the time. It is a to film who? that does not give enough. Who's got their pitchfork? Oh my God! A lot of people don't like it. The film. A lot of yeah, people push a, it down. I, I think I've heard yeah. that too. I mean, it yeah. just it doesn't land with a lot of the Marvel MCU it fans <sighs> as much as as much as some of these other guys. Yeah. And ask more of you. So then, when he shows up in other movies, yeah. you're like, "This is some serious shit." Yep. You got to bring in Doctor Strange, who is protecting our reality. Yeah. Yeah. 
And he's well, great in Avengers Infinity War. We he, have those back and forth with yeah, Tony. That's yeah. again, he, he is a better character in Infinity War than he is in his own movie. Right. But no, so I really dug your, like, you're right. That origin story, though it is mm. an origin story. It is. But, but it's an origin story where, uh, for the audience to have to wrap their mind around this world that yeah. they have. Mm-hmm. And that is very impressive. It made it believable, like this it, yeah. glass world thing yeah. where you can battle, but it doesn't, but you can shift perspective, dimension, yeah. Yeah. time, space, the, everything around you. And you're like, this is fucking bananas, man. Just, yeah, just that scene great. in the, in the, uh, in the, fu- in ER when she's trying to resuscitate him yeah. and they're fighting. As ghost spirits yeah. through the whole ER is this madness. So and then he comes so back great. through, like yeah. since she sees, and because yeah. the first time the juxtaposition of him and his costume within the hospital looks so absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, you yeah. never really think about how ret- ridiculous their costumes are <laughs> until you see it up against everyday life, and you're like, oh yeah, that's he's got a cape on. Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, absolutely right. <laughs> but yeah, the, just the the choices of the special effects and how they told the story and, and relay these complex ideas. I was I was in 100 percent on that. Yeah. All right. All right what's your number seven? Uh, my number seven. This might be a punt. Captain America. Yes, a punt. Okay. Absolutely. A punt. Uh, it's a punt, yeah. yeah. All right, what's your number six? <laughs> that was late judgment. <laughs> yeah, no, I was looking for it on my list. Uh, yeah. Six is uh, Spider-Man. Mm. Which one? Oh, just overall. Yeah. Yeah, no. Not yeah, on no. my list. Not, not, on my not, list. Uh, no? not on the list. Again, not on At your all. top ten list. <laughs> no. Yeah, what? he's on my list. But Do I need to punt? Are we talking in is right, like bottom ten. five? Yeah. yeah. Six through ten. Okay, not six through ten. No. Okay. That's, he's in your top five? Spider-Man's in your top five. Oh, get Phen- ready, motherfucker. Phenomenal. Okay. Get ready, motherfucker. All right. Go ahead, Matt. Oh, no, we have to wait. That's no, yeah. right. Now All right. So, so my you. turn. Let's right, get ready to judge his because he doesn't have two yeah, of please ours. Too, please, too. He's do. very judgy. Yeah, yeah well, very, very judgy. That's why I'm in this business. My well, number I, 10 I like is uh, Jackie Earl Haley as Rorschach in The Watchmen. What? Yes. It's not on my list. <laughs> uh, not, yeah, not I'm not surprised list. it's not on your guys' list. I absolutely, I have come to appreciate this movie so much over the last couple of years. The director's cut. And his performance as Rorschach is one of the most chilling and challenging performances you'll ever get from a hero, right? Most of everybody let, in the let in, this record state, you did air quotes. Yeah, sorry, I did air quotes. Hero. Yes, because most of those people in the movie don't feel like genuine no. heroes that you're used to. And just about everyone, except for maybe Night Owl. Night Owl is probably the only purest hero that you have in there, Patrick sure. Wilson's Yeah, but he looks but ridiculous again, compared to them. Exactly. But then level. again, he's also banging the other dude's wife, yeah. you know, behind his back. So it's like, well, you know, Dr. Manhattan could see all that happening. But either way, I, I just love what Rorschach brings to this role and that demands more of you as you watch it. The stuff with his face, the the his origin story within the movie, what he confronts, and Jackie Earl Haley bringing this character to life as someone who read the original Watchmen when it was coming out issue by issue. Mm-hmm. It was incredible to believe that they could bring him to life in this way and I really loved it and here's the thing if I'm looking at a character without any negative drawbacks there are no negative drawbacks for me with Rorschach the performance of Jackie Earl is incredible and in the movie it really works his entire storyline works so by the end this guy who you thought was a dirty grubby violent murdering psychopath hero has your sympathy by the end when he sacrifices himself for Earth, because he has principles. He has yeah, morals. He's got morals. He refuses to sacrifice those morals or live in a world mm. where he has to sacrifice those morals and principles in order to exist. And so for me, that's why I love him to pieces. And it's, mm. uh, it's the reason I keep watching that film over and over and over again when it comes on any of the pay channels or anything like that. So, mm. okay, so that's my number 10. So then my number nine is, uh, oh, 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 this is going to be controversial. No, Deadpool. Ryan Reynolds as well, Deadpool. you know, I get it. Uh, that's, that's called a punt. Wow. That's a punt too. You don't even have. Now we judge you. <laughs> the tables have turned, Mr. Riley. I, I don't have uh, interest Deadpool on my wow. list. Yeah. Oh, phenomenal. Um, okay. I, I, and I explain why. Well, no, 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 not until we get it. We'll get to it later. What do you got right. next? So then my number eight is uh, Gal Gadot in Wonder Woman. Okay. Anybody? Uh, Anybody? No. She's on mine. She's on your top five or top six? Uh, bottom six. Bottom six. Okay, bottom. what's your bottom? What number is she for you? Uh, she's number seven. Okay, number so seven. we'll talk about it. So, sure. yeah. So, look, it's one movie. Well, but, yeah. She, oh, of course, if you throw in Justice League as well. But well, like, I wouldn't. I would Batman. Yeah. <laughs> well, her performance. It's going to be hard to I not. Wouldn't. We're judging. I, we're not judging yeah. the movies. We're judging the performance, right? The and, performance and she's that can help. great yeah. as Wonder Woman. And yes. she's. And I was one of those people who was not against. I guess you got to throw in Batman versus Justice. I, I would not have thrown that. I don't like her in Batman uh, versus Batman Superman. V Superman. Right. Which is why she's a little further down on my list because that's a negative towards what she did. I, I didn't like her performance in that movie, but I loved her in Wonder Woman. I mm-hmm. love what she was able to do with it and what she was able to bring to it. And then. 
Justice League is not that great of a movie, but she is good in the movie in the parts that she has. When she confronts Bruce, when she has the conversation with Cyborg, all those things are really powerful. Now, within the actual Wonder Woman movie, all the stuff that she goes through, the way she plays the naivete, but the naivete without being stupid, without being some kind of doe-eyed person who doesn't understand how the world works. She's very strong, powerful, and principled in how she carries herself. And I thought Gal Gadot did a really great job of bringing the essence of Wonder Woman out. She may not be what you physically think of when you think of Wonder Woman, but she is yeah. Wonder Woman. You know? Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think, you know, it's that kind of quiet quietness. I don't even know yeah. how to describe it. How quiet she is in the part. Not doughy-eyed, but like very powerful. Maybe, yeah, you don't think of Gal Gadot as the Wonder Woman when you look at the comics, when you right. think of some of the fan casting. But now I can't think of anybody else. Yeah. And I think mm-hmm. that's the sign of a good actress. And I can't even... I, I, there's, there's great moments in Justice League with her. Sure. But that movie brings it down. Yeah. Like, it, she, it's just... That movie's just... So well, you got that plus Batman versus Superman. Batman v Superman, I like. You, you, I like I, that I movie don't under, a lot. Yeah. I, I, I really Riley do. And that I, movie I, has I, grown yeah. on me a lot. Yeah. And she's like fantastic. Fungus. Yeah, yeah. No, like a cancer. <laughs> like yeah. It's, <laughs> That's beyond I, I, I fungus. Say, You're not getting rid of that. I, I really enjoyed it, and I saw what Snyder was trying to do. But that's another podcast for another time. That's true. She was great in Batman v Superman, yeah. and you will say a lot of people will say this: she stole the movie out from those boys. Sure, yeah. And um, because she was great, she was quiet, she mm-hmm. was powerful. She she just had this thing. She walked in the room when she was looking at the the God Killer sword and yeah. and and following Bruce, and she, you know, and gonna take what Bruce did you know he she took on Batman yeah the Bruce Wayne detective Batman and mm-hmm. took that shit from him yeah and and left a note in his car and he's like what what it's like yeah world's greatest detective my ass <laughs> Wonder Woman just showed you up boy so that uh, she's great I yeah. that's why she's on my list at number seven yeah I agree it's just great stuff with her and it, you know yeah I mean, I don't, I don't want to say this. She just to bring that character to life in a way against all odds, against all the back, oh, yeah. all the back stuff everything that was, was going on. Her. Yeah, everything it was stacked against really, her. I mean, I couldn't believe the people that lost their mind when she was cast. Yeah, and the, and then the, the, some of the hate that would come out, and yeah, then, and then have her come out, and they go. Sorry. Yeah, even the hate before the movie came out yeah. when there were people saying, oh, I heard it's terrible or this or oh, that. yeah. And you're just like, oh, shit, I don't, what well, well, fuck? And then it comes out and it's incredible. And it's people great are movie. crying in the streets. Uh, all right, that was my number seven, right? Or my number eight? I don't know what you're looking That was 10, <laughs> 10, 9, 8. Oh, okay, so then my number seven is uh, Thor, Chris Hemsworth's Thor. That is called a punt. What? My man that knows. That is called a punt. My man you knows. He's, he's on my list. He he's, is, up, okay. he's up in the top five. Top yeah. five? That's oh, what, we are punting. See? Fantastic. I like Riley. You okay, know? all right. You should be our speed dial. Yeah, right? I'll <laughs> take for it. Any, for yeah, any I'll episode. Take it. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, then my number six uh, is the one I mentioned earlier, Blade. Wesley Snipes' Blade. Anybody else have him? I don't. He's you not on my list. disrespectful sons of bitches. He's been fantastic in three fucking films. He leads what? every one of those films. Oh, look, oh. In the third film, he is like eighty percent. Another. Person? I don't know what's worse is that how high he is on this list of yours, <laughs> or that he's on the list. Ba- look, Blade <laughs> One and Two are incredible because of him. He does a great job bringing Blade, and Blade is a Snipes terrible is character. Well known for phoning it in on this. Well, part. three on three for sure, hundred percent. Three for He'd sure. I would argue extreme two. Extreme close-ups. I would argue two, You're and one is both just insane. Whatever. I like one. What? I like one. One's, I'm in on one. Those movies what? never did it for me. They were what? like, eh. yeah, sorry. You're kidding. Two, I'm, I, yeah, I'm the same way. Two, I'm like, meh. Yeah, and three, I'm like, this my boy is Guillermo bad. doing it. Two is Guillermo, of course, but it just. I, they oh, never you're all landed insane. with me. They never landed all right. with me. Well, is it the movie or the character? Because that's what we're voting on. And for me, he does a great job with that character, right. bringing it to Your life. List. Yeah. It, and he's bringing it to life. And better, the, the character in the comics, and everyone who's talked about the comics has said this, he, the character is better in the films than it is in the comics. He did yeah. a great job bringing that thing to life. He's powerful. The stuff with Chris Christopherson, the stuff he's going through, the stuff with his mom in the first movie, what he mm-hmm. has to deal with there, all of that confronting that. And in the second film... About chasing this other and then leading this group of Ron Perlman. Are they playing both sides? Finding this new kind of vampire. All of it working in the whole time. And then Whistler comes back dealing with that. And then he gets betrayed in the second one by someone who is... Uh, who, what's his face from uh, Walking Dead? Uh, the uh, guy with the greasy hair. Oh, I don't God. watch Walking Dead anymore. Which, oh, no one season? watches Walking Dead anymore. Either. Yeah, right. So it's a good I saw um, like season Norman four, Reedus. Norman, Norman Reedus. Reedus. Norman oh, Reedus. Wow. Right, right, right. I Reedus is him too. God, I forgot about He's the that. guy that turns on him that's like his, his buddy helping him out with she, stuff. I totally blacked that yep. out. Yep. Yeah. Wow. 
And then in the third one, look, the third one is crazy piece of shit half the time. The Ryan Reynolds, uh, what's her face, who can barely act, Jessica Biel, uh, yeah, Jessica Biel, yeah. They, they Pat told, Oswalt's in it. Yeah, Pat Oswalt's good in it. Uh, Natasha Leone's all right in it, but the Ryan Reynolds stuff, it's like, what was any of that doing in this movie? And so it throws it off. And the devil stuff with Dominic Cooper is ridiculous as well. But he, uh, no, no, what's the guy? Not Don, whatever his name is from fucking Prison Break. Uh, uh, he uh, Wesley Snipes is still the great blade through that third movie even oh, if the third movie isn't that's, good that's when, he mean, is good he's, oh, he, literally I think it is he only did extreme clo- like close ups he wouldn't do any yeah, he, he stayed in his trailer no, the whole time the director can, and, he was pissed at, yeah. and I could see Wesley Snipes gigantic prickness like just wow. emanating out of that performance wow. and that's not a good thing for me okay. like and I saw that starting with the original Blade okay. and I was just like I can't I can't connect with He's this guy to Listen, nice he turned guy. so douchey he eventually said I don't have to pay fucking taxes you know <laughs> <laughs> think about it that's how crazy he got in his own head that I'm yeah. so big like I don't yeah. have to pay fuck, fuck that that's for poor people kind of shit yes and you're like dude no 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 yes, everybody's exactly. got to pay taxes this is exactly what I'm talking yes, about but we're this talking about like, he went off the rails. I'm not going to pay taxes because I'm Blade. Okay. <laughs> Part of it is he goes uh, just like, oh, look, I'm Wesley Snipes. Yeah. I do not have to do this. Like, Fair I enough. don't care. I feel like, <laughs> and now he cares because he's back jumping in there going, hey, you know, I uh, uh, developed a Black Panther movie and he was <laughs> featured in news for a he day. He did. He did. He said that. Yeah. Uh, for New Line, that's right. All right. So, all right. That was my bottom five. Okay. The Riley. All right. So. Number 10 is interesting for me because you already touched on this, Nose, but oh. I had Rocket and Groot. Oh, my not God. Not the Guardian. We should have talked about you, it right then. I should have, but I SOBs. thought, it, you know, I'm very new to this, so I was like, do I need mm. to say something? Because it yes. was not just yes, all do. of the Guardians, but it was those two. It's all right. Yeah. Further cements my argument, and we're once again against John. So yeah, so it's Rocket and Groot. You could be my Groot. favorite guest we've ever had, just so oh, you know. Oh, this oh is Oh, my great. God. I like this. Uh, Rocket and Groot is my number 10. Rocket so, and Groot. Is that, what do I do now? You're, I think you should... Talk if about you, it. If you want to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, go can. ahead. For anyone to make me care about a talking raccoon and a talking tree... 100%. ...is absolutely unbelievable. Because just like you said, just like, who, what were they smoking? Where were they? What casino were they in drunk in Vegas when they came up with this? I yeah. said the same thing. And then to have the moment... We just watched Guardians of the Galaxy the other day. Oh. And to have a tear in my eye when he says, we are Groot, and the reaction that Rocket has to that. Yeah. yeah. And then to care so much, to learn so much about him, and to even go further... His character, Rocket's character in Infinity War is incredible. Yeah. He starts to learn to care. He's like, ah, he has that moment. He's like, ah, I got to go care. Yeah. And talk to Thor. And then that relationship with Groot and right. Rocket and Thor was un- unbelievable. Well, we don't want to, those are spoilers technically. So yeah, it's, uh, I know, I know. Yeah. It kind of is. Yeah, but um, it's. You've seen the trailer. They're people. in the well, movie. That's true. You've that seen the true. trailer. Yeah. That is they true. I apologize. together in that. I apologize. Yeah. So, but that, that to, to care so much about Rocket is yes. such a great performance by Brad Cooper. I mean, the voice work on him is yeah, oh. incredible. Unrecognizable. He, he's unrecognizable. Unrecognizable. He's so funny. It's in, and I got to hand it to James Gunn a lot for this. To, yeah. to, like I said, make me care about a talking raccoon. Yeah. The, the origin story of his being just like torn apart, put back together as an experiment. Yeah. And it's that that he's that outsider. Yeah. He's like, okay, yeah. he's an outsider. So you have kind of an in with him as an audience. Like if anybody's been bullied, if anybody's been an outsider, felt that way. Rocket is kind of speaking for you because he says crazy shit. Yep. Yep. And when he gets a gun and he goes, oh, yeah, you're like, yeah, I want to fucking be Rocket. I want to be Rocket. <laughs> and then you have Groot, which is the best sidekick with him. I mean, yeah. he's a, it, it, Groot is great. So Rocket and Groot is number 10. All right. Yeah. Dynamic right. duo. What do you got right. at nine? Number nine, The Incredible Hulk. Whoa. I couldn't do it. Yeah. Wow. I couldn't do it. Couldn't do it, huh? I wanted to, but I wow. just couldn't. Oh, yeah. Because he's been is, awesome as as a part of other things. He has been awesome. He has been consistently good. Now, we could talk about Hulk, Ang Lee. Yeah. Sure. You have no. to experiment. factor this all in. You have to yeah. It was an experiment uh, that I thought was very admirable, and he was trying to make this weird movie. I appreciate Hulk on, on a filmmaking level. Mm-hmm. It did not. Is a Hulk movie. It sucked. Wow. It was just like, ugh. As a movie, it sucked. Not but even a Hulk everything. movie. Yeah. Uh, but okay. Incredible Hulk was great. But it was when Mark Ruffalo came in in the Avengers. Right. And that character, I mean, just the very little that he would do as, as Bruce Banner, his actions and everything, and just how great Hulk was, cemented with Ragnarok. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. That's, I mean, Hulk yeah. in Ragnarok is when I went, okay, Hulk, I love you, Hulk. I know. Yeah. I love you, Hulk. You do Planet Hulk. 
in the yes. movie, and you're yeah. like, this is the shit. And like, also man. give Thor his due as well. Oh, yeah, but it's that's still another, Thor's movie, but I mean, Hulk is so awesome. And yep. his, I mean, I love what they're doing with the character in Infinity War. I'm not going to go into it, but like, yeah. wow. Yeah. Like, I love to what make that they choice. Did. Yes. Yeah. It's a fantastic choice. And now, because he, the Hulk has now taken over. When are we getting a solo Hulk movie? When are we getting a solo Hulk movie? When are we get? They want this movie, and because the rights are still tied up at Universal, he has to appear in all these team up movies. The, for him to shine as much as he's done, and he, I mean, he's arguably some of the best moments in every Avengers movie. Yeah. yeah. So Hulk is at my number nine. Okay. And then number eight is Black Panther. Right. Okay. Talked about that. Number seven. Number seven is Wonder Woman. Okay. Talked about it. Number six, Captain America. Punt. Well, that was a punt for him. Okay. Punt. All right, so then... Motherfucker. You're out of your fucking mind. Ha! I love, so, I love how much controversy there is in this list already. My, my number five uh, is Deadpool, punt from earlier. Okay, go ahead. And that was with you, correct? Yes, I had it at number nine. Nine? I just think, as a character, I knew nothing of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I had heard rumblings like, if they do this right, you're going to love this character. Mm-hmm. That's all I kept bringing for people that yeah. read the comics and all that stuff. And I've seen... Where they'll do, take, like, on Imager, they'll put panels up from Deadpool. And I've read numerous ones of, like, here's a little excerpt and I had eight to ten pages out of this one that's really interesting. Yeah. Or this one. And I read the one where he kills everybody. Like, that oh, was yeah, yeah. super interesting. And I've read, like, this one, his interactions with Spider Man. I was like, okay, there's a lot to this. And to see that just come to life yeah. from the moment. From the first frames where, like, the Jack had the dipshit director and the this, when they're just doing the here's this and the, what is it, for the writers, the handsome, awesome, whatever. The yeah. writers are the only ones that got built up. It's like, wow, this, the, the humor they translated to where I understand and I have a rudimentary grasp of what this character is. Right. But, you know, the fact that Reynolds has been trying to get this version of it up for so long and it translated to a degree. It was like, I can't wait for the next one. Like, I'm geeked. The yeah. fact that this is coming out this week. This is yeah. a superhero one. As soon as they announced it, and then I started seeing some of the teasers and then the tie-ins off yeah. air. Uh, I fucking, I'm so on board with this, I can't wait. <laughs> nice. Well, you know, I put it in my uh, number nine uh, only because we only had one movie with him. And so mm-hmm. I, I wanted, I, I, but I loved him in it. Yeah. And he's great in it. And, and the love story is fantastic and everything he does. It's the best love story in superhero films. Exactly. And Ryan was, going, Ryan was going the way of the dodo, man, before this film showed up. This film showed up, kind of saved his career to a degree. And he's been great at it. And we just had Rob Liefeld on Talking Heroes. And he's, uh, uh, this episode of Heroes that we shot uh, last week, or this week, I guess, today, I guess, it, when we're recording this. And he um, was incredible in complimenting Ryan complimenting Ryan and saying how Ryan is really the driving force of this thing and making oh, it happen. Yeah. And yeah. You can tell. You know, he's really built it. Yeah. And so get that independent confirmation. It's nice to have. And so you get that. And already from the trailers and from the previews, it looks like he's back to doing the things that he does well. I just need to see the movie to know that it's 100% submitted and he'll move up. I know he'll move yeah. up on my list. Look, it, so that's it, the only reason why he's low. If we're doing the this in a reason. week and I've seen it and I didn't yeah. enjoy as much, maybe he's now at number eight and be like, well, oh, he yeah. lost some of the potential. Be, I don't know. Be. But right yeah. now I'm, I'm buying yeah. I'm buying whatever stock you're selling. Yeah, so he didn't, he didn't even make my list. Yeah, fascinating. Well, uh, you know, it's because I, I feel like there's a, a the superheroes for me do something where I like I want to look up to them. I want to I want to like be them. I yeah. want to do all these things. And as much as I love Deadpool, Deadpool is there to make fun of them. And that's why it's like I can't uh, really put him on this oh, listen list. Listen to you. That's okay. interesting. You know what I mean? It's it's I like, like that reason. He is a superhero, sure. Yeah. He has a comic book, sure, but he is like the one that steps outside of this genre and goes, <laughs> I'm going to make fun of you. Yeah. And that's what I love, but I'm not putting him on this list because okay. of that. Yeah, wow. I just think he breaks up the monopoly or the Monopi- truly. And I get that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Of yeah, just what this archetype is. Damn. Okay. Uh, I like your reasonings though, right? I like your reason for, I love, Obviously, I appreciate your reasonings, but I also like your reasonings for why. Well, it makes I'm trying sense. to remove them from yeah. this list. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's not right. going to happen. Yeah, right. I feel so like it's know. not. Uh, yeah. Probably not. Yeah. That's, but, that, but then and I was thinking about it, too, yeah. with all your guys talking about it. I'm like, I'd be okay with that yeah. on a top ten. <laughs> so that's fine. What's your number four? Uh, my number four, I'm guessing, might be a punt. Wolverine. Looking now. Uh, f- f- oh, yeah. Four. Do you have it in five through three? Any of yes, those? he is at uh, number five. Number five. Uh, I have it at number three, so I guess we, we can talk, talk about, about it. it. All right. 
They Wolverine. Found, they finally got it right. They well, oh, listen, yeah. it was never about him. He was always doing good work as Wolverine through all those X Men movies, through all those X Men Origins and the Silver Samurai, whatever that second one was, and the first one. And then, then finally, Logan, which again I saw last night. Like it is my superhero crack. Oh, you had time for that, did you? <laughs> A little off-air conversation, but you had time for that, huh? Something you've already seen before. All right, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, I don't have the time. I take my punishment. I don't have the I time. I take my punishment. Go ahead. Uh, yes. Anyway, yeah, Matt, it doesn't you, matter. You, you, it it sure ends that, right there. You, I will you, never bring it up again. Right, you good? Uh, well, at least on this show, I'll <laughs> yeah. probably bring it up other times. I'm sure. Uh, with Wolverine, it, it's it's one of those of we all kept giving it a shot because we that yes. character's awesome because he's great at it yeah, yeah. and yeah. he's awesome at it it's like it's perfect casting yeah. and we all love it from the comics and he's the best thing in a lot of movies I don't care for right P- please please <laughs> you know what I mean we've been getting stepped on coke and we finally got like some good pure Colombian we're like this is good where's this been give, I, give me that I always knew this was here somewhere yeah it's like, I heard about this I heard this is the shit <laughs> Have you, have you seen the R-rated cut of The Wolverine? No, there's an R-rated cut? R-rated what cut. What is it, the unrated or some shit like they that? Said, uh, is, I think it's the R-rated. Okay. Or, I don't know if it's unrated. There is an unrated version. Are you talking there about is? the Japanese one? Yeah. <sighs> yeah. I liked, I liked the first half, man. The, yeah, the first half is great. When they get to the subway and all that, and I was like, yeah. fuck yeah. And then after that, you're like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, yeah, man, and I, just, I think that movie is, is so good because wow. like, the, the Wolverine is like... Most of the time, he's like he's pining over Jean Grey. Yeah, and that's what I loved about it. I find that interesting. Yeah. I find yeah, the I fucking feel- villains that show up in the third, yeah. second half of the Terrible. second act through the third. Silver Samurai, you mean at the very end? Well, the girl yeah. too. Like, the, the girl too with the, the lizard, lizard woman. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, that's she served no purpose. She should never act. She did no purpose. No. no, and I and I get that, but it's the action and it's the, that character dynamic with mm-hmm. or not dynamic, but that character deep like like regret of finally yeah. getting some payoff for that travesty of the last stand we yeah. get what what the fallout was with him and that's what uh, i like and the, so. the opening was a comic book come to life yes where he saves a guy from a nuclear blast by oh, holding yeah. the shield door down and he gets just baked oh yeah and it's and great and regenerates. He looks up and he's just like yeah oh yeah just great. charred yeah. just great no and you know and then you go into logan so all of it just he's so incredible in this part and you know when he was first cast everyone was like this is ridiculous a musical yeah. theater guy there's no nobody way. knew yeah there's no way this guy's going to imagine do. if it was Doug Ray Scott, Doug Ray Scott yeah. with it. who dropped yeah. out to do yeah. something the, else. Mission there's, Impossible Two. Yeah. There's no effing way we're still talking about Wolverine and Hell Doug no. Ray Scott at play. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No Where's Doug Ray Scott? Way. No, no against, yeah. not against yeah. the man, but yeah, yeah. That, that, that's where you know the universe has its own mind. Where it was like we got to right. get this guy. Yeah, and I mean it's like wait, the guy who's saying Oklahoma, what's going on right yeah, now? Yeah, exactly. he's got a charm. He does, yeah. and a believability within like the the character of Wolverine. Right? Did you see the like the dubbing the the ADR that he was doing? Um, oh yeah, Logan's running at the end oh, uh, with haven't the, seen it. the climax. Where you see how that much Jackman was giving just in a studio wherever they were doing somewhere yeah. in Burbank doing the the ADR and just. One hundred and fifty percent sweaty in the earth, and it's and from behind. Like, you're watching him from behind. He, you're watching him watch, watch himself the thing and, then and, try and match. Yeah. Okay. it's yeah. incredible. It, it's incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. agreed. All right, uh, that was your number three. That was my number four. Okay, what's your number three? My number three is Iron Man. Yeah, it's not on my list. Can you believe that? Wow, I know. Really? Wait, what? Yeah, are you? F- no, you're joking. No, I'm not. We're, you're just trying you to do it? something contrary. Don't. Too- Okay, well, well we got yeah, okay. a punt. We got a slight punt situation okay. on our hands, but yeah. All right. don't even have it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. It was a it was a hard <laughs> okay. moment for me. Was listen, it your? Listen, you thought we were simpatico this episode. It's right back to this, this guy right here. <laughs> yep. Right back to my I main knew study I was for lose two, some two and a half, on three years. One. I know I was going to lose some people with this one, but uh, yeah, we'll, I had to. We'll I had, talk about it. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah, we'll talk about yeah. it. Yeah, we will. Wow. All right. Now what? Now it makes me question the fact that we sided so much Mother, previously. Yeah, you know? I, yeah. I might win you back. I see. See, I might uh, win you back. We were so close. <laughs> we were so close. We had like a mind meld. You, you, somewhat listen, going on, and now you it's can fractured. Go and flirt with the new girl at the bar. Yeah, so you're still coming home to me. That's the way it was. 
<laughs> off air conversation. This got, this got weird, guys. This got just weird. Me, it's about to get Brooke weird. He just took off his weirder. shirt. Hey, oh. <laughs> what do you mean, just uh, took off? But I'm just a, now talking about it. I have a controversial one that I left off as well. So uh, we'll see. When I we mean, get you're to giving it. me so, shit. You have Blade on your list. <laughs> I have Blade, and and I don't have a certain somebody else who's really big too either. All right, so my number five, yeah. Professor X, Patrick Stewart. I tried. Not on my list. How? No. I tried. How can you? He's so good in all the movies, and so is McAvoy. Yeah, I, but it, I this get is it. a great character. I, I get always it. get drawn to Wolverine in those and other things. What? Yeah, I mean, it's... I would. I, I mean, I'm more drawn to Magneto and all of yeah, them. especially in the newer versions. The newer versions, Fastbender. So wait, Fastbender's is awesome. Just, you're gonna pitch incredible. me Black Panther, but and you're drawn more to Killmonger. So what's the difference? No, I mean. Professor X is the stable guy going. Well, the difference is he didn't put Magneto on his list. That's, yeah, Magneto's well, not even Magneto on the hero. List. Yeah, well, he could be. I could argue uh, that he's I, been I, deserving on this list. Maybe. but he's not on there. But right. I'm yeah, saying. he's an anti-hero on some level. For sure. Sure. For sure. Okay. What? Well, the thing is with me, Professor X is what. I mean, like, bringing Professor X to life is just as monumental a task yeah. as Superman, Batman, mm-hmm. or even Wolverine. Like, to really bring that guy to life and do it in a way that was, that was believable and under... And you got the essence of the character from the comics. And I thought Patrick Stewart did a fantastic job with that. He has his, hero, his heroic moments through all the movies. Either he's trying to control his X-Men, trying, yeah. to make, trying to focus them up, trying to guide them through the stuff... And that's like everyone else gets to flip out and do whatever, but he's got to be the guy who's solid the whole time and keeping them under control. And then when you flip it around and do X-Men Days of Future Past mm-hmm. or X-Men First Class, you get this other side of Charles that you didn't know existed before, didn't get a chance to see in the, in the, in the, uh, in the, in the, on screen. And McAvoy does a great job knocking it out of the park. He does. I'm not the biggest fan of X-Men First Class, but I like him in it. And I yeah, like him and Fastbender in it are awesome. I like Fastbender as oh, well. Fast, the rest, that's I'm where like, I'd be yeah. like, I gravitate towards Fastbender because of I, uh, both in that one. Yeah, like both. He's incredible. Good in that. that. That to me sells me on Xavier. Mm-hmm. Uh, just in no, to take nothing away from Stewart because he's awesome. Right. Yeah. But when when uh, 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 Xavier helps Magneto actually move that satellite dish, yeah, that to me was a, a side of X because uh, in the previous ones we actually we would see him go inside somebody's head. Yes, yeah, and now you're in yeah. the head. Uh, as opposed to this, where he's just, you know, he's like trying to connect to another mutant. And right. I, I thought that was really powerful. It's a beautiful moment. Yeah, yeah and he does. And in, and in Days of uh, Future Past is really good because you don't, you'd never known Charles to have a crisis of confidence. And mm-hmm. to sure. see him questioning what he's doing, it's great. It's yeah. the most integral moment of his career. As he, if, if Wolverine doesn't go back in time to help him, come to terms with what he's done and accept and forgive himself and learn how to be a leader of these X-Men, there's no way Professor X exists. And I think McAvoy did a fantastic job of that while also being heroic, while also putting this team Mm -hmm. together, while also trying to control Eric uh, uh, Magneto from, you know, indulging in his tendencies to go against the humans. And and then also trying to control Jennifer, trying to not control, but trying to uh, connect with Jennifer Lawrence as kind of mystique. To bring out the best in her. bring out the best in her. Exactly. And so to me, that's why this character deserves, because I've never seen a bad performance of this character in any of the movies. True. And it's yeah, That's why it was a tough cut. I was like, hey, it's just he's usually like part of an ensemble. Right. Well, so is Wolverine. Yeah, um, I know. All right. I know. <laughs> all You're right, not so wrong. Is, I'm not. So then my number four, which is most likely a punt, is uh, Superman, Christopher Reeve and Henry Cavill. Well, yeah, from one side of the table. <laughs> punt? All right, so what do you got at three then? Uh, Wolverine. Oh, okay, never mind. Right. So, uh, what do you three. got at five? Then? So, what's your number five? Uh, my number five was Logan. Okay, Wolverine. Wolverine. Okay, four. What's your number four? Okay, Batman. That is called a punt. That's, That's not. A, it's not on my list. I, I once you said it. <laughs> Batman's not on your list. It's no. Not on his list. See, and you're giving me shit on Iron Man. That's interesting. Trust <laughs> well, me. If you we're find back me being bestie, if there you we find are. me we one bad there. performance, I figured I would get you. If you can find me those. one bad performance of Iron Man, then great. I can give you three on Batman. So go ahead. So now this is part of my overall. This helps. The case of John is part of a Sandinista sleeper cell. Because <laughs> every once and again, his, his you know, black spots in cop, pop culture and what, what he spots? is drawn to is like, I feel like you learned this as opposed to live this. And I, then, I, yeah, I can't believe Batman's not on the list. I know. You can't say yeah. anything. You but I, Iron but Man I'm not gonna, I can't really also talk shit because Iron Man's not on my list, right. and I get that. So. You can, though. You but, can. but I will. On yes. this one. Okay, so that was right. your number, this is your number four? This, that, that was, was four. It was Batman. So go ahead and talk, cause is, or is it a punt for you? It's a punt. Oh, three. damn. All right, what's your number three? Yeah. Number three, get ready. Oh, shit. Four. Damn, that high uh, up. Well, we'll call this a technical punt. It's my two. Wow. 
he, love it. Dude, after Ragnarok. He was switch. Thank you. Dude, this is a character. Ragnarok and Infinity War, yeah. too. Yeah, 100%. Un- fucking believe I have no I, idea what's I, happening Please here. keep going with this character. Yes. They Incom- have Chris Hemsworth and Taika Waititi. Mm-hmm. I have yeah. all the credit in the world. Finally figured out Thor, mm-hmm. and they played to his strengths. Uh, Chris Hemsworth's strengths. To a degree that... Unbelievable. Blown away. Yeah. and Blown away. Especially in Infinity War, some of the stuff that... And I brought up mm-hmm. Rocket. You've seen the trailers, everyone. Yeah. But there is stuff in there that just... Whew, oh, boy. Are we talking I about know. Thor? Are we, we keep talking about Thor? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, we, we keep... Because it was my number Well, it's seven. my two, so it's this high on the list. Let's yeah. give it some, some fucking love. Yeah. Man. Yeah, because, I mean... Because he was... The, he was Even in, uh, in Avengers, I was starting to really dig him. Because yeah. I could see that, that, that humor coming out in, in Hemsworth. It's like... You know, that's my brother Loki, and he's like, he killed three hundred demons, like uh, half adopted brother. You know, yeah. and he yeah. just had that moment. But then his just the action. But it wasn't until Ragnarok. Yeah, yeah. Ragnarok is when you're like, what? Wow. I mean, the, wow. Just the opening of the movie. He's talking to himself. You think he's going to narrate this thing? No, he's talking to a, a skull. I know from from the jump when it opened, I was like, I don't know if I like this. Yeah. yeah. Five minutes into it, I was like, I don't know if I like this. Breaking the fourth wall, like he's talking to us as an audience. Yeah. And right. Not he's not existing in this world. And then from it to go from that to, it's one of my favorites now, it, all time. That's mm-hmm. in my top five. I don't know I, where. I, I fucking know. love that movie. Yeah, I love that movie so much. It's, it's Ragnarok is is slowly becoming one of those movies, my favorite all time. Yeah, yeah. A, in the superhero genre, sure. but he just there was something about Hemsworth that even in the original Thor, I thought he was fantastic, and I think the mm-hmm. original Thor doesn't get a, get a lot of love, mm-hmm. and I don't understand it because I thought he was fantastic. I love the fish out of water. I love yeah. him being on Earth and being like, I am the mighty Thor. Nobody can. And they just put some. You know, and he's out. Yeah, yeah. You know, and he gets hit by a car, and he's it like, and he learns how to be worthy again, and that it still works for me, pitch perfect. Mm-hmm. When he gets me on here at the very end, I yeah. just, I love Chris Hemsworth, and again, yeah, Ragnarok. I can, I can go on and on and on about Ragnarok, but Infinity yeah, War, you know, he really, there was something very beautiful about his performance because he had uh, some quiet moments there. Again, yeah. I can't go too far into it because of well, the Infinity this War. At one point in Infinity War, he is the only character that actually gave me goosebumps when yep. I watched it. Yeah. There was one specific too. scene, and yep. I was like, boom, goosebumps. I was like, after all that, you've yeah. already seen this f- fucking superhero hmm. gasm yeah. for right. how many, however long it's been. And then yeah. that comes on, you, your brain just goes, holy shit. It, it was one of the, and okay. I think I know what you're talking about, too. Because yeah. it was one of those moments we needed in Infinity War, especially, and it was anchored by Thor. Okay. And it was so real from the performance to the character and then you talk about the action now that they're doing with this Thor guy, man. Yeah. I'm sorry. The, some of the best action I've ever seen in Ragnarok. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and the comedy is pitch perfect. It is. Well, and that's the thing. That's what unlocked the key is uh, Infinity War, right? So the first two films don't get a lot of love because in the most, from most MCU fans. They don't think yeah. it's a good trilogy. Um, but I, I defend it as well. The yeah. Thor. Yeah, and, I like them. And Dark World. I defend both of them. Uh, and yeah, think Dark World They're is, enjoyable is great. films it's for fine. what they are. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. fine. It's, it's, more it's not like Iron Man it, 2, for God's like sake. Like the fact no. that I find like little interesting details about it. Like when the car or the trucks are suspended. Yeah. That's not CGI. Yeah. And right. it's like, oh, wow. And it makes you appreciate the fact that they tried to, because this character is a god, yeah. still ground you in, in reality and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. And in the first one, the action, you know, directed by Kenneth Branagh, a yeah. stage director on some level. Yeah, he is. It's beautiful. It's you can see everything go. Yeah, yep. it's grandiose. Yeah, but yeah, I, and, I think but Dark I think World, right. just, they, they were still trying to figure, Marvel, you know, yeah. still trying to figure out that character. I think as you guys talk, I, I've, I, I should put him in my five. I should put him at five. I just, Hell, uh, yes. Right. They do the That's character fair. that I thought was I think okay in comic. and. Just forgot, movie is okay, like, yeah, in the but I forgot so about good. I forgot about Infinity War and what he does in Infinity War, and I should have factored it in my head a little bit yeah. more. Yeah. So that makes sense. I yeah. just I just can't believe how they pulled him off, and especially when you're thinking the comic. The comic he's boring. Yeah, like, he really is. He's yeah. not that great. Not not that, that layered right. in that, and I think it's because of the, the the comic. What you know, him tapping the staff and becoming Thor. This is just Thor. You yeah, know, he's just, this is who he is. For that, for them to make us believe that. One, there's an Asgard. Two, that he's a god, like yeah. technically, yeah, um, is is no short of a, of a miracle in in mm-hmm. the MCU. Yeah. And then Taika Waititi, my God, he's, yeah, he's a god. Yeah, he is. I love Taika Waititi. <laughs> All right, so that was your number three. That's your number two. That was my two. So, so then we go to my two? two. Okay, my two is Iron Man. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that was my three. That's what you. Yeah, said. Oh, yeah I forgot yeah. about that earlier. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, and you don't have it on your list. It's which, not on my list. It makes no goddamn sense to me. It was hard. You We're know not even I mean? having it's, this yeah, conversation. Pre- Look, he's going to get on the list. The reason I didn't put him on the list because I knew he would be on the list. Oh, for God's sake. You know, I'm tired of people doing that. Yeah, yeah, people listen, do that. Listen. But I, I just knew. But see, the thing that happened with me with Iron Man is that now he's he's kind of this like Marvel's answer to like, you're going to go see our movie, right? Here's Iron Man. Here's Iron Man. Here's right. Iron Man. And I'm, I'm okay with that. I enjoy everything he's done. It's like I'm like arguing against myself, I think. But it's like – because I love him so much. We're inside just, Riley's mind right now. <laughs> there was just – I wanted to highlight these other guys. Just a labyrinth we're going. Yeah, exactly. I know. It was like, it's like counter-argument to the same also, argument we're just making. Argument. If you I just hope the folks don't, I think I just painted myself in a corner too. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, what but the I problem doing? you don't realize is behind you in the corner are knives. And you're like, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, crap. I'm but, just hoping yeah, no, the torch uh, stays on. Yeah, he's become <laughs> kind of one note for me. What? Unfortunately, in the, in the uh, MCU. Yeah, but it's like Coltrane, baby. That note can last as long as and it needs to. I can't argue with that. <laughs> I can't. Uh, I can't. Yeah, he's he's my number two because uh, we don't. Have, we're not even having this conversation or this list or this episode or hell. We might even not even have jobs, Riley, if not for what uh, in this business. If if not for what Robert Downey Jr. Junior does an Iron totally Man. Agree. He absolutely is incredible in building this idea of the. Yes, Kevin Feige, of course, but like without Robert Downey Jr. as your touchstone, as your cornerstone, your foundation to launch everyone else, there's no MCU right now. And his ability to play the and I think you get a great point there, Matt. The idea of it being Coltrane, it is that note. That note is so good and so charming exactly. and so interesting. And he layers that note in different movies. Mm-hmm. When he's going through PTSD in the third film, that's incredible it to is. do that with a superhero. This isn't like Batman. Oh, should I? Should I not? Or Spider Man? I don't know. Should I? Should I not? This is something else. This is I've survived a trauma and I can't function. And it's still in Infinity War. It's brought up in Infinity War. It's like Captain Kirk when he says, I'll never forgive the Klingons for killing my boy. It's that kind of thing where it connects and it builds through. And so it's a fully fleshed out character. And then you have him introducing Spider-Man. And yes, yes, I get your point. We have to, but the DC's, DC's about to do that with Wonder Woman. They're going to use Wonder Woman they everything. They have to. And they were doing yeah. that with Batman. Yeah, with Batman. they were doing yeah, that with Batman. Were, yeah, exactly. So I get it. I get so, yeah, it. But, so, but what he does is so good. And the relationship with Pepper Potts still works. It's still interesting, still fun. They make you care about a ladies' man who is uh, spending all that money, doing all these things that he's doing, and he's kind of a dick sometimes, because Tony Stark is yeah. a dick in the comics, but it makes it work, and it's interesting and charming. And even that scene between him and Doctor Strange in Infinity War, where they're, get, where they're having the back and forth, and it's funny as hell, and then they, when they get on the ship with Ebony Mo, all of that is incredible because of Robert Downey Jr. And at the end, when everything happens, the way it happens, and his reaction to it, it's not just one note. There's so much more going on because he feels... That situation, and when that certain person dies, you remember what he said to that person in their movie, and you go, damn. And it's mm. all there in his performance, which is why I, he's my number two. Mm. I would probably move some Rocket and Groot off my list to get <laughs> Iron Man back on. Well, it'll make it, it higher the than Thor, that. right? It'll make it higher than that. <laughs> no, it, 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 it would. It Don't would. you worry. I can do that because I knew. Uh, all right. Well, What's your number two then, Riles? My number two is Spider-Man. Wow. Spider-Man. Wow. I, Spider-Man what number is, is it for a, you? Matt? I added it six. Oof. Six? Okay. Yeah. Spider-Man right. is my number two. There's a lot of reasons why. I mean, I've just always identified with Spidey. Okay. Yeah, of course. You know, um, from the comics, because I was such a huge comic fan of his. And yeah. so when Tobey Maguire comes out, and I'm like, wow. Oh, he nailed it. Mm. This is great. And then cemented it for me with Spider-Man 2. And it was like, there's something like deep about Spider-Man for me that's like, he has so much going on. Like he wants to, you know, get a good grade on his paper, yeah. and then he wants to get home on time and make sure Aunt, uh, Aunt May is okay. And I mean, so much, you know, you see it in Spider Man too—the juggling act that he's going through. There's something I felt like I was doing the same in high school mm. because I was going through his family dynamic stuff. It was a divorced family dealing with stuff where I was like, I got to take care of my little sister. Then I, and I'm being like, yeah. I got to go do good, do good in school, and then I, am, I have to go to soccer practice, and, and then I'm going to go to theater practice. Like there was so much going on that. Every time I would turn the comic, Spidey would make me feel good. Right. Yeah. And so then to see him do some great movies with one and two, three, nope. Yeah. Amazing Spider-Man, Andrew Garfield was great. I thought the dynamic with him and Gwen Stacy were, was okay. great. Sp- Amazing Spider-Man 2 is the worst. The worst thing. Okay. But well, now Todd... Spidey 3 is the worst. 
I would I would argue that Amazing Spider-Man Two is worse than Spidey Two. I, I can't. It's so bad. When you have a Bob Fosse number for no fucking reason in the middle of your <laughs> yeah, movie, that, that pissed me off too, man. Well, it's yeah. not even pissed off. It's just like I don't understand what we're doing. Yeah, I and don't. That was, and that was Raimi. That's Raimi that bringing in Raimi that. Being... He's bringing that Army of Darkness shit into yeah, Spider-Man. That's not even no, 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 because that is that Army of Darkness. They don't break into Bob Fosse. Like, yeah, no, they don't. This is I don't understand. Raimi, what, what is this a, a I, reference to? Do what you is, want to know my conspiracy theory with that? Yeah, is that Raimi was like. You want me to put in Venom? Fuck you. He's going to dance and be a goth weirdo. Like, I swear to God, I think he torpedoed that movie because he was pissed at I don't know why you do that. But there's also a pattern. He was just pushing back and doing like, I'm going to get crazy with it. But yeah, I agree. But there's also a pattern with Raimi, right? Because in the first Evil Dead 2 movies, 1 Mm -hmm. and 2, he has this incredible horror element to it. It, yeah, oh, yeah, it's comedic. It's more the second is more comedic than the first, but the third one there's absolutely no horror element to it at all that no. is believable. Right. No, and the I, horror is just to service the comedy, right, right? Which which is completely different than one and two. It is, but it works. And mm. I think he was trying to do the same thing in the third installment of this particular trilogy, completely against first and one and two, but it completely doesn't work, and he yeah. failed it, at it. I it doesn't work. I think he was going for comedy. I just think it was... <sighs> but I don't understand the choice. That's why I yeah. can't wrap my brain around it, so... Yeah. Spidey's. Yeah. Lo- I love Spidey. So the fact that Tom Holland, like the potential of this now, is yeah. basically why he that, got six. That yeah. Well, that's yeah. why he's at number two for me. Well, not only just because I love Spidey is who he is, but Tom Holland is the Spider. Great. Yeah. Absolutely. And you that, saw him in Civil War, and literally, I think we both said yep. it. I think everybody said it. That's not my new favorite Spider-Man. Yep. Yeah. After that, that's, five minutes of talking, mine yeah. too. And yep. and then further cemented with Homecoming because mm-hmm. that's the Spidey I wanted. That's yep. where to see him, the humor there. Yeah. He was the Peter Parker that I was reading in the comics. The action is there. I thought he was fantastic in Infinity oh, War. Yeah. Yeah. I cannot wait to see what they do with with Part Two, whatever it may be. Yeah. But that's my Spidey, and I love that it's back with Marvel. And they get it because they're keeping him in high school. Right. Yeah. That's the Spidey I always know. That's what bummed me out a little bit with the Raimi trilogy is that he was out of high school after the first act of part one. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So then he's in the real world and it's like, you know, I get it. And we get there in the comics. But it's, it's, it, he's always the high school kid. Yeah. And, and we have yeah. it now with Tom Holland. Yeah. So. No, you make good points. I mean, yeah, I loved Spider-Man Homecoming. I loved him in Infinity War. But those Spider-Man 2. And I don't like Spider-Man 1. I don't. You don't I, like Spider Man. I, I don't. I don't. It's boring as shit. But I. This Spider Man Two is great. I. Don't, I've never rewatched any of the Amazing Spider. I, like once was. It, I think Garfield. I watched that first one twice, maybe. And the fact that these films don't I've make me want to come back to it. That's a big sign. You know, for I me. found myself sucked in with the with Amazing Spider Man when it was on TV. Okay. And I was like, this is better than I remember it. But it's okay. yeah, it's. When the reboot happened, the I was like, dad yeah. stuff, it just, yeah. he just kept yeah. taking off his fucking mask. That's the only yeah, thing that killed right. me. It's like, this is what? Well, what? It, it was like Berlanti's again, universe. Like Sony really just screwed that up because yeah. they yeah. really, like, they were trying to create their own shared universe and, and you know, right. Sinister Six set it yeah, up. Yeah, a little preview yeah. of what's coming. Yeah, and I, and, I, and I thought they blew it. It's like, no, listen, we right. can't have his parents tied to some big grand conspiracy. That's the thing. Spider-Man yeah. is one of my favorite characters in comics, period. Top yeah. five. Top five. And he, he loses his parents, and it's just, but they don't come back. That's yeah, the whole it's point. All yeah. The thing, yeah, all, that's the whole point, which is why uh, two is the best one. Uh, and then Spider Man Homecoming. And then there were so I reversed But there those. were so many negative things for me. Oh, no, no, I mean, like in terms of the chronological order, not in terms of the actual ranking. Oh, for me, Spider Man Homecoming is yeah, my favorite Spider Man you... film. Right. Those are the only two that I can talk about. And then you throw in the Civil War, throw in Infinity War. But there's not enough there to counter all the negative interpretations that I've seen of Spider Man in the movies, which is what matters, is what we're talking in my mind. I'm just focusing I, on the movies, but now, which is why I took it off my list. The potential now weighs into my yeah, that's my fair. list. Just yeah, because, because otherwise Thor would, you know, I don't know if he'd be number two after like five years from now. Who right, knows? But right, right yeah. now, the potential of that plus what I've already seen, yeah. you're fucking knocking out of the park every time you touch this character lately. Understood. Exactly. And we're getting, I mean, this is what, the, the third version of the character. <laughs> The one, two, three, four, five, sixth movie. Yeah. And Homecoming is the highest grossing of all of them. Yeah. So there was no, like, fatigue for Spidey. But that was also Iron Man being part of it, too. So you can't I think, it, was, I think it had a combination of Iron Man and the MCU. Yeah, yeah I think it's yes. MCU and Spider-Man. But that's what yeah. it took to save it, though. Exactly. It's well, a monumental hot. Sony was torpedoing it, but now I can... 
look at it and go right now. Yeah, there's but, a reason Spidey yeah. had so many at Sony on its own. Like Spidey is still yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. It just I think uh, Iron Man wasn't there to to help it with box office. I think Iron Man was there as a blanket for all of us, going, "We're going to make a good movie." Yeah, like you've seen us do get great results with this yeah. character. Yeah. Now we're just going to rub some of that shine of you. Know, we know you like this character onto this one. Yeah. And I and I loved how they put him in the MCU by giving him the mentor of Tony Stark yeah. and giving him the suit. I thought that was a brilliant reimagination of yeah. the origin. Yeah. Because we had seen every movie, and I get it, is Sony is like, here he is building his suit. Yeah. And then it looks completely different. It's like you go from wearing sweats to this beautiful costume. And I'm like, <laughs> that's not Spidey. That's, right. that, that, yeah. I didn't get that. But I appreciate some. There are moments with Tobey Maguire that are just like completely Peter Parker. Oh, yeah. Moments that weren't. Listen, in X2, when he's holding up that thing, talking to Mary Jane. Oh, so great. Uh, it's a fantastic scene. What incredible acting but, by Toby but, in that film. The reason now he's at two is Tom Holland. I okay. mean, this, yeah. again, Fair. my God, like, it's even T-bone. in Infinity War, he was Spidey. Yeah, I he was, was just like, shit, he's saying all these things yep. that are mm-hmm. just wonderful. Yep. I, just, I just adore it. Okay, so what's your number one? Well, my number one, I already know what your guys' number one is, and the worst yeah. part is, I already know I'm going to lose this fight, and it <laughs> sucks. <laughs> uh, I understand your argument. My number one is Batman. Okay. As soon as we said this, yeah. that's that's my favorite of all time. Even the bad ones, I don't give a fuck because yeah. to me wow. the potential of that is limitless. Yeah. I will see every Batman movie you put out, no matter how bad it is. Wow. Yeah. That character has its meat hooks in my heart and soul, okay. and he is my all-time favorite. So, yeah, the ones that are bad, uh, trust me, I'll gladly sit here and shit on them with mm-hmm. you. Yeah. But it doesn't depreciate my love for. Hey, they're gonna make a new Batman. You can always do this good. You yeah. can all. I believe in it. Even. Like, I don't care okay. for the Affleck version. I hope the solo is good. I will see it. But once they reboot it, once he's finished, I will see that one and right. every iteration, plus the animated features they put out, like Mask of the Phantasm, I oh, think is so great. Good. Yeah. And, oh, good point. I didn't factor those in. Yeah, Fair Killing points. Joke. Fair point. Killing, Killing Joke had a release. Yeah, but it's just. First like, uh, 28 minutes are terrible. As soon as, the, as soon as the actual graphic novel starts in, yeah. the, in Killing Joke, it's great. Exactly. Yeah. The first 20 minutes are a piece of dog shit. They had to add to make it a full release, I guess, or some shit. Such a mistake. I don't know. But at the same time, like, you could keep doing that. The, the straight-to-DVD stuff, yep. and that's the time when I like DC the most, is their straight-to-DVD. Yep. Like, Justice League Doom, that to me is one of the best Batmans I've ever seen. Mm. That mm. is awesome. I because see that. I, I if you haven't seen that. that, so the the gist of it is, uh, spoiler alert for those that haven't seen it, <laughs> uh, if I'm getting them right, I've seen them all, but I think Doom is the one where all the different guys in the Justice League start getting picked off. One by one, by very a minute. No, I have specific seen takedowns. Yeah. And it comes out that someone hacked into uh, Bruce's computer. Contingency plan. And right? he had made these. If any of you guys ever turn on us, right. how do we take them out? And yeah. like, that's what Batman would do, right. of course. And right. then he realizes, eventually he was like, me, I'm the one that's taking everyone out. Someone has taken, like, got, gotten in my mm-hmm. files. And you're like, yeah, that's what Batman would do. Right. He would never use it unless he had to. But, of course, he's the smartest the best detective, he's thinking it out. Mm-hmm. But I, I fucking, I love Batman. Someone just posted in our Facebook group some Batman is a ninja thing. Yeah, Industry. Batman ninja. The oh, yeah. Batman coming ninja. Out. Dude, yeah. I was like, what, what is this? Have you not seen the trailer? Uh, no. Oh my God. I don't watch trailers. Don't oh, forget that. That's fantastic. Yeah, but I'm like, you got me. It looks great. It's yeah. so, can't wait to watch Shout it. out yeah. to Roger Craig Smith, yep. my, one of my best friends from high school, is the voice of Batman ninja. Oh, really? Yeah. Because yeah. he did the, the Batman origin, the, what was the, it was the video game. Arkham, what, Asylum? Arkham Asylum? Yeah, it was Arkham Asylum, but it was Arkham something. It was like oh, Origins. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. It was before, yeah. it was yeah. like a prequel, so anyways. Yeah, my friend Yuri Lowenthal, yeah. who, I did the, who I did another podcast with, he is one of the voices in Batman Ninja as well. What's he do? Yeah, you know? I think he's doing Nightwing, I think, or Robin or something like that. Nice. Yeah, but and uh, what's his face from uh, Arrested Development is playing Joker, Tony Hale. Yeah, Tony, Tony Hale. Hale. Really? Yeah, yeah, from Veep. Dude, yeah, I love that guy. Yeah, he's, he's good in everything. And this is a Japanese thing. It's a Japanese production. So it's Japanese originally voiced. It's Japanese dialogue. All that oh, kind okay. of shit. It's Japanese production. And, just and then they with just American dubbed actors. it. Yeah, with American actors. Perfect. But it is all set back in feudal. He like. Gets... I know. As soon as I saw the cover of the yeah. artwork, I was like, "Yeah, you got me. <laughs> yeah, you got me." It's almost like an Elseworlds thing that they used to do. But it's he trips into some kind of time thing or something, and he gets transported back to feudal Japan. I love it. Yeah, I love it. And the Joker has a whole. Yeah. Can't wait to watch Joke it. Joke has a whole samurai thing. It's just brilliant. Uh, all right. So that was your number one? Yeah, my number one. I already know what you guys are number one. Is yeah, right my number ahead. one is uh, Captain America, Chris Evans. Wow. That is my number one. Yeah. I... Cap, yeah, huh? Yeah, man. Yeah, I can buy it. I, like I, I think love Cap. because the degree of difficulty to get this right was so 
insane, especially when you heard DC saying, well, no one wants to see a you know good guy superhero anymore, good at two shoes superhero anymore. And Marvel goes, no, they do. Let me show you how. And they killed it in First Avenger, which I love that movie so much. Touches me, moves, makes me uh, emotional every time at the end. The stuff he does through that whole film, it makes me cheer about it, cheer for him because he's this underdog, skinny kid. He's got this big heart, wants to fight through everything. Then in the second one, which you could argue is the greatest MCU f- film made yet, p- some people argue that Winter Soldier is incredible. It's a '70s political thriller. He's so great in that. And then the third one is Civil War, which is so fun. Even though Zemo is not the best mm-hmm. villain, he's good in it so much. So yep. when he has this back and forth with Tony, you've seen the progression of their relationship which makes sense when they battle it out over Bucky down there in that uh, yeah. concrete basement mm. and um, then you throw in the Avengers movies he's he's a leader he's a leader he has to do all these kinds of things he has to he has to question Nick Fury sometimes and Nick Fury's desire to do these, these corrupt these possibly corrupt things in the guise of saving America you get that going through it so all of it works so much so that when he returns in Infinity War the Place goes insane in every mm. every theater I've seen it in. They go insane when he steps out of the shadows. People love that character so much and love what he does with it. Chris Evans is incredible with that character, and he really gets to the heart of why that character works. And I've never seen him deliver a bad performance ever as Captain America. Mm. And he has elevated every film he's been in as Captain America. So for me, I couldn't believe I put this at number one. And when it was, and I when it landed there, I was like. You know what? I don't have an argument for this against. Yeah, him. I mean, look, they took a character that I didn't care about in comics, right? And turned yeah. him into he's usually in the, one of the best parts in an amazing film. Yeah, and that is I impressive totally to me. Yeah, yeah, I was feeling the same way as we got to Avengers. Yeah, first Avenger, first Avenger was fantastic, right? But when we got to Avengers, I'm like, I actually care about Cap. Yeah, and then Winter Soldier was like. Cap might be one of my favorite Avengers, so I, I'm with you. I think he's a great character. Chris Evans, I just adore. And to have him balance off Downey Jr., who is the mm. questionable guy. Like, Ultra is not the great movie, but the scenes between Evans and Downey Jr., where they're having the philosophical battle. Yeah, as setting up too. Civil great. War, too. Yeah. Yeah. As well, heroes, War, what, right. we should, what we should be doing. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, I, and I love his quips, too. It's like, says something yeah. like, language. He's like, did he just say language? Yeah, and, and they, I love that. And yeah. they get you to like that. Yes. What would normally yeah. be a school marm is actually interesting because cool. he's and backing likeable. it up, saving everybody's asses right. left and right. So right. you know they get to break his balls a little bit. You been asleep for you know all these years. Iron Man is what we really are. Captain America is what we want to be. Well, you you see That's that once you great. see the argument yeah. between the two of them. Yeah, and and this guy that was a goody two shoes before, you're like, no, he's he's in the right in this one. Mm-hmm. I side with him. I'm Team Cap. Mm-hmm. Like Iron Man, this is your fault. On yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was Team Cap. I yeah, think. a couple yeah. times over. Yeah. The only thing is, I, I think it'd be higher on my list. Uh, had I enjoyed the first one more, I would have steamed, rolled me, oh, kind of built right. even more momentum, even though I think it's a great film. Yeah. And the next two after that are awesome, and he's great in Avengers. Uh, I don't know. And now I'm looking at my list, and I'm like, maybe he should have been higher. <laughs> I, I, I'm, the the same thing. Thing. I'm kind of looking, but, not I'm wrong. Like, but I stand by it's like yeah, I could put him in five. I love this. I could that's probably the go eight on him. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. the but, joy but, of the show, man. This, this that's why this conversation is great, because yeah. it's it's all subjective. Of course. Gonna, like, it is. Now we're gonna hear about you're, yep, you're incorrect gonna, gonna, number one. <laughs> well, I'm gonna go shock you actually. You're not. My number one is Billy Zane's The Phantom. Beautiful. I'm kidding. You go with Alan Baldwin the shadow? of course I know the shadow. Uh, no, it's the Rocketeer. Um, <laughs> right. Superman. And yeah. I love no, what you said about Batman. It could be just put in Superman. Like he's had his hooks in me since day one. Sure. There was something that I saw in 1978's Superman yeah. that is beyond comprehension of why it, it landed with me. I can watch that movie over and over again and, and get chills in the opening to, uh, to, to get sad when he loses Pa mm-hmm. Kent. To, to just revel in the fact that he shows up. And Christopher Reeve, as Clark Kent, is one of the greatest performances in film history. Yeah. I'm sorry. For him to... He becomes Clark Kent, and you buy it. And he's like, oh, hi, Alice. And he throws his hat behind him and lands on the... Oh. And I just love the, the humor that he does. But then when he becomes Superman, when he takes those glasses off, there's a moment in Superman 2... Where he wants to tell Lois, and yes. he pulls the glasses off, yes. and he stands up, and you're like, "My God, that's Superman! <laughs> that is Superman!" And he's and he's trying Oof. to figure out how to tell her, but he doesn't want to. Yep. And even though the movie's quest for peace 
Oh, God, it's oh, awful. So terrible. Part three is, oh, God, it's awful. But again, like, I'm going to steal your arguments. I can still find wonderful moments in there. Sure. Like, one of my favorite things Superman has ever done happens in part four, mm-hmm. Quest for Peace, where he's trying to do a double date with Lois and this other girl, Mary, Mary Hemingway. Or yeah, right? yeah, it's Mary yeah. Hemingway. Mary Lou Hemingway, whatever yeah. her name is. She's the publisher's daughter oh, yeah, or something. Yeah, the publisher's yeah. daughter. And he basically makes the doorbell ring. He looks at it. The doorbell rings. And then he turns, and they go, oh, that's so – and they open the door, and they're like, who's there? And then all of a sudden, Clark comes, hi. And it's, that's how Superman – he yeah. flew down and came back up. That moment is beautiful. And then to give Snyder credit, Zack Snyder credit, mm-hmm. he's the closest we've gotten to getting Superman right yep. in Man of Steel. Where yes. What is it like to come out and be essentially a god in a world of zero superheroes? What would the world do? Yeah, if you're Superman, an if, if an alien mm-hmm. stepped forward and is the most powerful person in the world, what would our world do? Try to kill it. Yeah. Or deify it. Deify it. Do, uh, and, and his, Henry Cavill's just phenomenal processing this. It's all in the eyes. Mm-hmm. I love Costner's Paw Kent. And, and being that voice of the, of the world, like, you can't show yourself. You cannot show yourself. You, yeah. I will kill you. Watch me die yeah. to protect you. That, I thought, was a that was beautiful great. moment. Yeah. And then to have him, I mean, it got a little heavy-handed in the end there. I get it. There's a lot of action and the, and the divisive oh, nature yeah, of that, yeah, yeah, of yeah. like what, blowing up blowing up things. But he wasn't Superman yet. Right. And my God, Warner Brothers, I wish you would have had a little bit yes. more faith to let him try to complete that trilogy. Mm-hmm. But at the same point, I think the wheels kind of fell off in Batman v Superman. Yes. But he was going for something, and I think, unfortunately, Snyder was like, oh, but Batman's my favorite, mm-hmm. so I'm going to put him in there, and we lost soups. And now I'm like, and yeah. then I'm treated to by far the worst return of Superman, death of Superman storyline in Justice League. I'm like, yeah. that's how he's coming back? You, yeah. you missed, but that's, that's going against my argument here. Um, <laughs> I just, that's that's my problem with... Uh, Justice League is just, it's, it's, it's a Frankenstein monster of a movie. In comic and, and whatnot, because of Chris Burns, who we've had on, he's like yeah. go, he's the one who told me to read Red Sun. He told yes. me and, and read a couple of things, and some of the direct to DVD stuff they've done animated, I think, is excellent. Re- yeah. Read All Star Superman, um, okay. uh, Morrison and uh, Miller. Yeah, or no, was it Miller? No, not Miller. Uh, yeah, Morrison. Yep, not Miller. Uh, he, it's fantastic. Is it it's Tony it's, Morrison's take on it. Uh, it's Grant Morrison. Grant Morrison and, yeah. um, <laughs> I'm trying to uh, quietly, very quietly. I don't think he knows who Tony Morrison. Is. I don't know who Tony Morrison is. Who is Tony Morrison? <laughs> She's a writer. <laughs> She's a black author. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, it's the only Morrison I could think of. I had okay, Tommy Morrison. What about Jim Morrison? Come on. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, it's no. a lot of bad high school poetry, and I don't need that shit. <laughs> but I, I just what, love Superman. What for, kills me though is like, <clears throat> Batman versus Superman isn't a fucking hiccup. You know what it is? You ever see The Simpsons where they go to the World Trade Center and Homer gets a boot on his car and he goes to leave later? Oh yeah. Decides to hit gas, yeah, and the thing just... shreds his car, and then he has to do that. Yeah. That's Batman v Superman. They had a working car, and I'm like, all right, this thing can finally drive. And they're like, no, 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 no. Now it's just got this fucking hump every every yeah. goddamn. Oh, I, well, I, I don't, I don't know if that was Snyder. He, I know he loved Batman, or if it was Warner Brothers being afraid of the grosses of Man of Steel because it didn't do as well as they were hoping. It still did great. It, it did, did great, as well as they, they wanted. Were looking at, uh, they finally might, showed promise, man. Yeah, it, it was showing promise. I mean, I, I, I love Man of Steel, but Superman is just somebody <clears throat> that you know. He's what I str- like. He just was always doing good. Yeah. He was all, and he learned that from his parents. And if you've ever read uh, the Squadron Supreme comic book yeah. line, have you ever done that? It was like a, like an alternate reality, yes. dark version of okay. superheroes. So they had like their version of Bla- of uh, Batman. They yeah. had their version of of Superman. Okay, but it's essentially the same kind of origin story. Uh, an alien comes from another planet, lands in the in in right. the backyard of the small town, yep. and they go. Oh, do you want to keep them? And then in real life, it's the government going, no, nope, uh, excuse me, we're going to take that. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. And then they train him to be a weapon for the government. Yep. So you think, what happened if Superman landed in some other, uh, uh, some other yard mm-hmm. or yeah. another place or the government got to hold them? That's why I love that the parents are as important. Ma and Pa Kent are so important to who Superman is. He's always going to do good no matter what. Hyperion. And, that, and I love there's... And I know this sounds cheesy. Yeah. Alien versus uh, Superman versus Aliens, the comic line, 
really expanded on that because he it was going off of a storyline where Superman's like, I can't kill anymore. Like, right. I can't use my powers to kill. So he's trying to reason with this alien <laughs> xenom- <laughs> xenomorph thing. And I'm like, you're just going to have to what? kill this thing. What, do they speak English? No, he was, he was trying to reason with it. And the thing kept just coming at him. Yeah. And he's like, oh, shit, kill. Oh, my God. I guess yeah, that's but how do you reason with something that you can't doesn't speak? Right. But it, was, it just was an interesting look at Superman being like, I'm going to try. That's why he's good. Yeah. That's yeah. why I love Superman. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. I just love him in movies. Always will. The symbol is as iconic as the cross. Mm. I mean, you Ooh. see that like they did some kind of study where the Superman symbol is as recognized or more than the actual cross. Wow. Because that's how ingrained in, in our culture he is. I would believe as. I can't believe more. More. Yeah, I, I think I, I, I don't know what as. it is. One of you guys out there uh, listening, uh, look yep. that up for me. Yeah, well, I'm just like maybe the Nike logo. Yeah, the, it's, a, it's like, like one of those things. Well, you're saying certain iconography, iconography as long yeah. as it's simple enough and it's been attached yeah. to something for long enough, then everybody knows it whether you just, or not you want to. Exactly. Right. Yeah. You know it. Like, you don't have to see a Superman movie. You exactly. see that symbol. But, yeah. You see a swastika. You see yeah, exactly. the Apple logo. Yeah. You exactly. see the, it's like, it's all the same. As long as it's, it's yeah. it grab your attention and it'll embed itself. Yep. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know much. I can throw a little bit. I was my number four as well. And it yep. was, uh, it's a uh, Christopher Reeve. Yeah. I mean, like we aren't even, I guess I said this for about our, for Robert Downey Jr. Iron Man, but we wouldn't even have a superhero genre without 1978 True. Superman. And that's uh, Christopher Reeve does is fantastic. That, so charming. That's, yeah. That's the what whole I would thing. say too. We People, said that in our top, uh, top uh, superhero movies yeah. that it people, was like we wouldn't have these superhero yeah, movies without 78's uh, Superman yeah and people cried when he died people cried when he broke his broke his spine that's how much he was their Superman Christopher yeah. Reeve was our Superman yeah. for so long and then something comes along like Cavill's Superman which I absolutely love and I've defended we both like the movie we've talked about it on Man of Steel uh, on the show Man of Steel and um it's because he finally exposed what Superman would actually be like yeah. as a foreigner. Yeah. Being in this situation, being afraid. And people who hate the movie, I don't understand. It's not my Superman. It's not my Superman. Yeah. It actually is your Superman. You just don't know. You just don't remember that there are darker elements to Superman throughout a story. There throughout should the comics. Be. There needs yeah. to be. Yeah. Because otherwise he is an alien. alien. He's not relatable otherwise. Even, even in Dark Knight Returns, when the scenes with Reagan, he is a weapon of Reagan's in the, in the, yeah, no, in the no, comics when he shows he is so desperate he thinks, to be liked, yes, to be yeah. wanted, to feel like he is part of America. And he thinks and he's, he's doing, doing the right thing. thing. I'm following he's doing the right my thing. president. Exactly. Yeah. And that's exactly. Great. Which yeah. is brilliant. So there's so much about, and, and the people bitch about, oh, uh, you know, Kevin Costner, that's not Pa Kent because Pa Kent tells him not to do things, not to that's a father taking care of his son. Don't expose yourself. They could hurt you. They'll destroy you. Yeah, he you, is a small town father. Exactly. You increase the complexity of the character. Yes. And made him more human. Yeah. So yeah. I was I had zero problem. People were complaining about that. I was like, really? Yeah, I know. that I made one of the it. most like within the context of that scene, and you see it happening. And it's unspoken across that void yeah. in the mm-hmm. distance, and you're like, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I buy all the motivations in this scene. He's yeah. teaching him lessons. Yeah, right. Look, I get I get the Glenn Ford father from the first Superman, of course, but that's a different time. Yeah. Right? It's also a different take. It's a different take. We're coming out of Vietnam. We want to feel better about ourselves again. It's 1978. We want to believe in heroes again. So it's a pure film in that way. It's yes. very black and white. It's very pure. It's very simple. Looking out after his father dies, looking out. It's almost the two sons moment from Star Wars. Exactly. At, in, in the grass. And his mom mm. comes up going and on says. on journey to yes. find who he is. Go to Metropolis. It's the yeah. Jesus metaphor. He's exactly. gone for, for years discovering himself. The yes. learning Krypton, learning his powers, yeah. all this kind of stuff. Yeah, and it was a different time. Yeah. 1978 was a different time for that. He was the big blue Boy Scout. Yeah. And then I think that that stigma of 78 is why... 2006 is Man of Steel. Everybody's like, well, blah, 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 blah. it's like, calm down, <laughs> calm down, go through the noise, go through. I know there's yeah. a big battle at the end, and he snaps Zod's neck. Yeah, Get yeah. over it. You know, he's yeah. learning to be Superman, but look at what the, the, the quieter moments. Look at underneath. Yeah, and I hate to break it to you, he kills Zod in Superman 2. Yes, he throws him down a bottom of his He's dead. <laughs> so for all you people, oh, he snapped the neck. Superman doesn't wow. kill. He killed him. Not my Technic- Superman. Technically, it happens off camera. Sure. You don't see it. Oh, sure. Again, so sign it's a of the softer time. death. He kills. Yeah. yeah. But this is a bit, I mean, I couldn't, buy, I mean, he's looking at Zod getting ready to kill a family, yeah. and he has to make that one choice. And I don't know why I don't think it's damn powerful that he kills the last person from his planet right. and, in order to save another family. And it's his first real test battle. Yeah. 
It's everything. People want him to fight like he's a veteran. It's for sure battle. Yeah, he can't just show yeah. up and be like, "Here I am, I'm Superman. Yeah. How are you, sir? Let right. me get your cat out of that tree." Exactly. No, he's got to get. He's got to move to. He's got to get there yep. through tragedy, through trial and error, yep. through heartbreak, through through failure, all that. Yep. It's, it was great. That's what makes him relatable, not yeah. distant. All right, well, that's our uh, separate lists for the top ten uh, show. Now we're going to combine our lists here. Nice. Yeah. This like is going to be a hell of a haggle. I know. Because we're three uh, very I, strong, opinionated people. What sucks is I think we've already established what number one is. Uh, yeah, I guess it would have to be Superman. Uh, uh, right? Uh, or is it, well, or is no, it Captain America? All three of us have Captain America? Oh, we do. We do all have uh, okay. Captain America. We all have Captain, Captain America. America's first. So Captain America is number one. Oh, that's okay. I did not see that coming into it. I didn't either, but Superman I'm okay with it. Superman is two. So where do you have soups? I have it at four. Shit, and then you don't have, where do you have Batman? Batman I have at four. Oh, Nelly. So the other two number ones are the same uh, split. Nice. Um, all right, I will make a case for Batman over Superman. Okay. Uh, and I know we're basically asking a lot of each other. We're, we're going to have to team up, I, I think, to, to make the world a better place. Uh, the only argument that I, get, that I can make, because otherwise we're just talking well, like, well, this is going to be a list, but you've got to decide. No, I, know. I know, I know. Yeah. I think. Or I should decide, really, since I'm the one. Yeah. That well, no, because you have one. <sighs> no, I don't. Oh, yeah, Yes, I do. you do. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Never mind. So we're all working <laughs> against each other. So my case for Batman is this. <laughs> His success rate is so much higher than anything Superman has done in films mm. because of Dark Knight. Mm-hmm. But also, Batman Begins, Dark Knight Rises, I think, for me, is still better than anything Superman. Mm, um, couldn't go there, but... I, I know. But I, but I appreciate it, because I, I don't know why the Dark Knight Rises gets as much hate as it does. I, no, I think it's I, a look, fantastic movie. I think it's movie. still very... Fl- yeah. It's flawed. It flawed as flaws. shit. I, I don't find it even that... Fl- I wouldn't call it a flawed movie. I would call it just... I, we were coming off of the Dark Knight. Do you... Let me ask you. Do you have any Superman movies on your personal internal list higher than Dark Knight? As, as your favorite overall superhero films. Oh, yeah. Does it, 78. Superman is your number is, one? Is my okay, number Dark one. Knight is my number one. Yeah. I, think, I mean, I would probably put Dark Knight number two, number three. You know, I mean, it's like, okay. it's definitely up there because it is such a masterpiece. Uh, well, what's your sell on Superman? I mean, my sell on Superman is, is 1978's and, and the reason we would not have a Dark Knight or a Batman if that movie didn't work, if we didn't believe a man could fly, which is they were going with the tagline, not even of the movie, mm. not even of the character. They're telling you, I'm going to make this movie and make you believe a, a man can fly. And so they did it. And it is just, it's so perfect as a movie that this, this Superman movie is not only going to be mentioned in all the great superhero movie debates, yeah. it's going to be mentioned in the, the film debates because it's, it, Okay, let's not go too far. (laughs) Let's not go too far. Because it exists at a perfect time in seven years. Yeah, because of its place when it was released, but the movie's got flaws. I don't the movie. Dude, I he guess spins the earth backwards to, to Yeah, man, it's Superman. Go back in time. It's yeah, Superman. Fine, fine. He can stop the rotation, reverse the rotation. That has no effect on time whatsoever. And it would fuck our gravity and the some, entire and world some people up. I find it because 100%. They, they say Superman is not flawed. He actually went against his father wishes, do not meddle in the, the, he did. the humans way their destiny and he goes against that at the very end of the movie yeah, and say and does that to save lois lane's life because he <laughs> fell in love even as a kid when i saw that scene i was like what the fuck is going on oh i loved it i, I mean that's it. why you know, as a kid when you see a man with, you know pull back time yeah. by just flying around the, i bought it hook line and sinker i was like yeah he can do that i, I don't know what to do here because you already have the deciding vote uh-huh. but you agree with him so it's mm-hmm. the two it's one of us relenting it's yeah okay, but isn't two against one? No, because he well it is. It's so we're going at two, number two. Yeah. We're looking at yeah, yeah it's two against one. it is two against one. You know yeah, that. you know how it works. Yeah, it is. I'm happy with Batman to... and three. <laughs> yeah, Batman's at three. Um, I'm, I'm glad you're happy with Batman and three. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it when hey, someone. We're does... all shocked that Captain America. I hate it when one. someone does that. Well, you know, it really pleases me that uh, I just won. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no shit, it does. No shit, it does. Uh, uh, I got uh, Thor at two. You have it where three? Oof. I had Thor at three. Yeah. Do we have? We all one, have Wolverine. Two, three, where do we have that? I have, it, all... I have it at three. I had Logan at five. Okay, so that means Wolverine goes next. Well, okay. Well, I'm just saying that's we all yep. three have it. Yep. It's, yeah. Do yep. we have that again? I don't think we do. Because uh, you don't have Iron Man. You don't have Wonder Woman. Oh, what about Thor? Does everybody have Thor? I have Thor. I have Thor. Number yeah. three, yeah. 
Oh, three, two, Wolf. Uh, My I number still seven, think Wolverine but I is technically yeah, because of the seven. Yeah. Yeah. But I, so Thor would be five. Well, That's four. Eight. No, Wolverine is four. Four. I'm sorry. Yes. Thor yeah. is five. All right. Uh, so now Iron Man, Iron Man was my number two. It's we my have, three. You don't have it. Spider but I, I would say, two? where are we at? Number f- number six? six. Yeah, I would put Iron Man at number six. I would. I know he's not yeah, on my it's, list. It's higher okay. than. I know he's not on my list, but okay. I, you know, for all the reasons you guys talked about, and then yeah. you know, and then you want to put Spider Man on next. Well, least? it's his two. What, okay. Do you have anything higher than that? Because I got Spidey at six. Uh, do you have anything higher no, than two? No, Professor X is the only thing I have left at and five. Neither of us have Spider Man yeah. on there. So Spider Man should be on there. I'd put him higher, but you know, it's, I guess it's your show. <laughs> Uh, let's see. <laughs> Way to play for the fans. Two of us have Deadpool. Where do you have it? Yeah. Where do you I have, have it at number nine. Okay, I got it at five. Anybody got anybody got something higher than five? Uh, let's see, Thor, Spider-Man, no. Superman, because America, uh, Wonder you, Woman. Did yeah, Wonder Woman's my number. Black Panther. Wonder Woman's my number eight. Yeah, but I think it's his seven. My five nine, I think, would trump that because there's a five involved. Which one was this again? Deadpool. Um, the Deadpool. Yes, he's not on my list. I know. I, I would, Wonder Woman's yeah. not on my list either. Right okay. now, we're working with twos. Who's got right. the higher twos? Deadpool is fine then. Well, I would say it goes Deadpool, Wonder Woman, Black Panther. Okay. Because those are the commonalities. Uh, yep. Sounds I think that uh, that sounds good. Okay. I'm not going to play to the hosts here. That I'm in their I'm in their dojo. But uh, I love the process of this. Like, <laughs> yeah. I really do. Because when the list plays out, yeah. Yeah. you can go, all right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's like yeah. you got to make a choice. And, you know, you got to kill some of your babies. And, uh, That's the and way it is. And take, take it. Yeah. And, you know. That's why it's a good show and a tough, uh, tough episode every episode. Because you really have to cut out some stuff. And you've got less objective things going on. And yeah. you have personal, atta- personal uh, attachments to these movies. So. Yeah. And, yeah. It, you know, you look back. We'll look back in a couple of days and be like, wow, that number two looks so wrong to me. Yeah. And there's nothing you can do about it. Yes, <laughs> it's stuck there now. It's officially canon. Oh, <laughs> I like it. All Very right. nice. Just because you were here, that's ultimately why we're not going to be friends. <laughs> Superman now race ahead of Batman. That's just not. That's not right. Oh uh, I think, God, I so think you just did that to fucking attack me. You son of a bitch! Don't have Batman on your list. That's you not true. I can't even. But yeah, but that, but that I can't believe son you don't have Batman. If on there's your only list. one performance of Batman that I enjoyed, and that's Dark Knight. That doesn't make me. You know, that doesn't. I, you know, Keaton never did it for you. Ah, Keaton doesn't. Yeah, not even Ben Affleck. I think not Ben Affleck is a fantastic Batman. Affleck is only good in that and, scene in the warehouse and the Kevin Conroy stuff. That, I don't count that. I, it got theatrical release. It's I, part I of know. the. I just don't I count it. Discussion. Mask of Phantoms. Fucking. Place. Oh, it's a good yeah. film. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, all, right, all right, there it is. You, you got it written down. It's my turn to bang. If you got yeah, it. Yeah, I got it written down. All right. Here we go. Give me that false The top ten superheroes in movies. Yeah. And number ten. Black Panther. And number nine. Wonder Woman. And number eight. Deadpool. Coming in at number seven is... Spider-Man. And rounding out our bottom five at six... Iron Man. All right, in the Cinco spot. Somehow, Thor above Iron Man. Yep. Thor. Yes. Oh, uh, number four. Wolverine. Coming in at our third spot. I'll let Matt take this one. Number three. Okay, this is what should be number one. <laughs> Batman, guys. That's right. What are we talking about here? And number two. Riley. Uh, it's Superman. That's right. And finally, our number one superhero in movies is... Captain America. Wow. Bum, bum, bum. Well, you know what? America. America. We did it. One, two is America with mm-hmm. Superman as well. Well, this is... Look, it's, it's a we, tough thing we haggled I out. think we create a poll in Facebook and Twitter and see what, sure. what of those three options should number one have been. Oh, my God. I think, that's I think you need do. to do that. I think that'd be interesting. I think We've I'm never sure, done it before. But, if you, but, if you, and, if, but, here, but here, I see what... Is doing. Yeah, of course. Yeah. He doesn't like to lose. Yeah. He's who not likes to lose? I, I think, He's not I think, a big who likes to lose? Just like Warner Brothers put fucking Batman in a, in a Superman sequel, you're going to try to get the, the fans going, voting for Batman because they will. <laughs> Dude, if that's your counter argument, you already lost, my friend. That's what I already lost. That's but if, if, you put the, if we put the poll up and Batman still loses, what will you do? Will you concede then or will you create a new poll? What, what poll am I going to I don't know. You, you come up with these hijinks all the time. Who's, who's the who's, snazzier dresser? I like don't, a, yeah, who's got the best cape? I have no idea. <laughs> Well, Cap doesn't have one, so well, that's beautiful. He's already out of that go. run. Yeah, that's true. That's true. 
Uh, all right, well, that's yeah. that's our uh, list of top ten superheroes in movies. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, us haggling this list out, talking about it. Maybe we missed some of the ones that you – maybe you want to put another – suggest another superhero uh, that you want to throw on the list. Let us know on the tweets or in the Facebook group um, or somewhere else, I guess, in the comment section on YouTube as well. Let us know if there's anything – maybe you want to – do your own list. I think one of the greatest things that I enjoy about after we put an episode out is people going their lists in the comments section. Yeah. A lot of fun to see what other people or enjoy attacking us or attacking us. Yeah, I love absolutely. It. Yeah, I'm sure they do that too. Oh, right? absolutely. Well, they're, I mean, they're they're all good natured about yes. it. It's like, yes. how do you have this over this? And good. Like, well, because I'm right. We have trained our audience not to be assholes. I, I would I like. would say yes because yeah. that you know it's not like when I say hey, you know I really like the last Jedi on a Collider show and then you know people are like I'm going to murder you. <laughs> You're like, what's wrong, dude? <laughs> That's crazy. They did like a speak and spell to attack you with I'm, <laughs> I'm going to murder I'm going you going to murder you oh son of a bitch I can't Jesus. trace who that is oh no he's gone <laughs> sentient <laughs> Skynet oh, is taking over now we're preying on one of John's biggest fears AI <laughs> that's and, right I can't Not it's coming AI. Please, it's coming God. to get no. you nope uh, um, kill it, kill it! All right, so, um, all right, well, M- Riley, you had something you wanted to talk about and announce and well, uh, tell people where they can find you as well. Well, yeah, you can find me uh, at, on Twitter at Riley Around, but I thought this would be a good place. I've enjoyed your show, guys, so much. Thank um, you. The fans who, who support it. Uh, I will actually be launching my own podcast. I'm announcing it for the first time on the air here. It will show up on the SK Podcast. Mm-hmm feed Fucking it will be top 10 exclusive a top 10 <laughs> exclusive it is known as the riley roundtable for the schmoes fans that know you guys were following me along when i was doing the riley roundtable on uh, schmoesdo.com when we were really building the brand mm. i've been asked a number of times will i ever get to do this this is something that's been a dream of mine to actually just do something and talk about go a little deeper on movies but not just touch on movies oh i love superman or i love star wars but yeah. like Go into what was the writing like? What was the the journey to production? Mm-hmm. Get it made, but also look at the especially nowadays. What did the movies do for our culture? Yeah. For our the discussion in film, our discussion and the pundits around us, and the discussion of like how it can end a studio, how it can cause somebody on Twitter to lose their mind because they don't like the movie. And I'm going to follow you. Every angle of social media to yell at you. I want to examine all of that. Wow. I'll have special guests on. I'll go into other areas of movies, mm-hmm. writing. Uh, you know, it might be something just taken from the headlines of Twitter, and just be like, you know what? We're going to talk about the fact that fans think Disney pays me to like <laughs> Star Wars. Yeah, I want to. D- that might actually be Spoiler. the first Ooh. Riley uh, roundtable. Nice. Spoiler like, alert. I want to break that down. Yeah. I'll have guests on, and then, you know, sooner or later, I'd like to launch something more and do perhaps uh, more shows. You know, I I actually want to tease. I I, I have a show idea with a certain gentleman out there that is a very divisive gentleman. Uh, More on that later. More than Roka. Wow. More than Roka. Wow. I don't know if that's possible. But I want you gentlemen on there. Nost, I want you on. Roka, I want you on. You'll get guests. We'll do polls. We'll get all of that. I can't wait to launch this thing. I'm working working it out now. The technical side of things, but hmm. I would look to uh, maybe the end of May as the first episode. Wow. That okay. soon or definitely by June. But Riley Roundtable is coming, guys. Tell me what you think. Hit me up on Twitter at Riley Around. You heard it here first. There it is. Top 10 exclusive. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Sunday, yeah. Sunday, Sunday. The Riley Roundtable. Um, yeah. uh, Matt, what do you want to tell them? Tell the fans before we wrap up here? Uh, nothing other than if you want to join the discussion on Facebook, it is facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash the top 10 show with the number 10. Um, for those of you that are listening to the classic, uh, uh podcast on, uh, Patreon, yeah. I love it. C- uh, keep letting us know, Hey, th- this is the first time you guys talked about this, or I can't believe you had this on this list and you don't even talk about it anymore. And whatever else it is, uh, I think it is fantastic. So please let us know every time it pops up or you can follow me on uh, Twitter, Instagram, whatever. At Matt Nost, M A T T K N O S T. And you guys can follow me at The Roca Says on Twitter and on Instagram. Uh, and if you want to donate to our Patreon, thanks to everybody who's been donating to our Patreon, the Thunderdomes. It's been so much fun interacting with you all. And uh, the number keeps increasing every month, which really, we really appreciate. And if you have not donated, you can go. There's multiple tiers on there at the Patreon, www.patreon.com backslash the top 10. You can even donate at the $50 level and you get to choose a topic that we talk about and we give you a big old shout out on the show. 
So thanks so much to everybody who's donated and you know given it, given so much to the show and supported it. We really appreciate it. Um, you can find me, yeah, like I said, at the Rogue Says. But then I, you, I do an interview. I've just did an interview of Black Series Rebels. If you want to listen to that, and of course Matt and I were on the Take Three uh, podcast talking about mm-hmm. our Schmodown vic- or Schmodown matches. I don't want to say victories, but matches uh, that recently just happened. So you go and listen to us there as well. All right. Well, thanks everybody for listening this week. Uh, that is it for the top ten show, and uh, we will talk to you all next week. Toodles.